Hey, what's up everybody? Ben here from blogwithbin.com and welcome to the how to start your very own food blog video tutorial. I am super excited about this video. This is a fully comprehensive from start to finish, zero step skipped video. Inside this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up your web hosting, how to install your free WordPress theme, how to design your theme so that you can have a truly unique and innovative food blog to share with the world. Also, I'm gonna be showing you how to grow your following through email marketing and how to get subscribers and get those loyal subscribers to come to your food blog. I'm also going to show you how to share your recipes. Again, this food blog is specifically built for people that want to share their recipes and, and share the reviews of different types of restaurants and, and whatnot and share them with social media, whether it be Pinterest or with the world. And again, this video is a fully comprehensive step-by-step -step video that will show you exactly how it's done. Now, before we get started, I encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel or sign up for my mailing list. That way you can stay up to date with all the video tutorials in the future. But without further ado, let's take a closer look at what we're going to be making. All right, so I've packed this tutorial with a ton of value, but here are the main topics that we're going to cover in this video. First, you're going to learn how to set up your web hosting account using Bluehost Web Hosting. Next, we're going to install the WordPress.org blogging software. Then we're gonna install the free WordPress theme called Kale. Next, you're gonna learn how to set up your blog for success by installing plugins and creating a child theme for your blog. Then you're gonna learn how to design your blog and create a truly unique experience for your users. You're also gonna learn how to use HTML to customize your blog's overall look and feel. I'm gonna show you how to install an opt-in form and grow your audience with email marketing. You'll also learn how to create stylish recipes to display on your blog while implementing multiple revenue streams. And finally, you're going to learn how to secure your blog and keep it safe from outside threats. Plus, as an added bonus, you'll also learn how to monetize your blog so that you can start earning a passive income with your digital platform. This is important because food blogging has become a billion dollar industry, and the sooner that you can get your foot in the door, the quicker you'll be able to start generating revenue with your blog. Next, let's take a closer look at what we're gonna be creating in this tutorial. So what you're looking at right now is Kale, and this is a free WordPress theme that we'll be using to build your food blog. It has some pretty amazing features out of the box, plus it gives you a ton of flexibility whenever it comes to customization. Kale is a fully functional website with blogging capabilities, and it also comes standard with some pretty amazing features. For starters, the homepage allows you to present your content with a minimalist yet attractive feel. And one thing that I really like about this theme is that it comes with a full width banner that allows you to connect to a landing page. This is a great way to build your following and grow your email list at the same time. Additionally, the logo, colors, sidebar, and footer are all easily customizable and can be built to match your particular brand. Plus, everything looks super stylish, which is what really attracted me to this theme in the first place. Now, the blogging features include a two-column layout that allows you to publish great-looking content and earn money at the same time. This free theme lets you easily implement affiliate marketing promotions, Google AdSense campaigns, and you can even sell your own products from your blog. The sky's the limit, and Kale gives you the ability to earn a passive income online. Now, another bonus feature of this tutorial is that I'm gonna show you how to beautifully display recipes on your blog. This feature is a must have for any food blogger and with the help of a pin it button that I'm also gonna show you how to install in the tutorial, people will be able to easily share your recipes on Pinterest. Now the flexibility of this theme is pretty amazing as well. I'm gonna show you how to build a full width about me page, which will give a lasting first impression to your visitors and let everyone know who you are. Additionally, I'm going to give you access to my code Cheat Sheet, which saves you the headache of having to manually code everything yourself. My Cheat Sheet lets you easily copy and paste the ready-made code and gives you the ability to customize every aspect of this theme so that it fits your style and overall brand. Finally, no blog is complete without having a way to build your following. And this theme allows lead generation capabilities and it can help you build and grow your email list. So I'm gonna show you how to set up your email marketing campaigns and install an opt-in form within your blog. This is the perfect launch pad for any digital business and it's 100% free. 
Plus, I'm gonna show you how to build everything you've seen so far, step by step. And one final note, people nowadays are spending an increased amount of time on their mobile devices, which means they'll expect your site to be responsive. Having a responsive design not only helps you meet and exceed these expectations, but as of 2015, Google Search expanded its use of mobile friendliness as a ranking signal. So if you want to get found on Google, your blog needs to be responsive. And as you can see, this free theme is 100% responsive and it looks great too. The user experience on the desktop is mimicked on any mobile device or tablet and the responsiveness of this theme can assure you that you're meeting the mobile requirements of Google's search algorithm. That's the great thing about WordPress. They offer some pretty substantial layouts whenever you compare them to the premium themes on the market. For example, this premium theme is going for about $130, and that's just for the theme alone. That doesn't even include the professional services to install the theme. And as you can see, this company is charging you nearly $400 to do what I'm gonna show you how to do in this very video. Plus, this tutorial includes some web design and development aspects, and many WordPress designers will charge thousands of dollars for custom design and development. So if you think about it, that's a savings of nearly $1,000 if you follow my video and just do it yourself. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, now in this portion of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to set up your very own self-hosted WordPress blog using Bluehost Web Hosting. I personally use both of these services for the majority of my web properties, and just know that after this tutorial, you're going to have an extremely powerful digital platform that will allow you to scale and monetize your blog very quickly. Now, this tutorial will be taking you through my Bluehost affiliate link, and all that means is that if you decide to make a purchase, I'll earn a small commission, but by doing so, you're helping me keep my blog up and running, and you're helping me provide for my family. So for that, I truly thank you. Plus, this link is an exclusive offer for WordPress users. Bluehost has partnered with WordPress, and as you'll see in a few moments, this exclusive offer is packed with some amazing features for WordPress bloggers. It really is a phenomenal partnership that they've been able to develop. Now, one final note, this offer comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so rest assured that you can get a full refund if you need to. So with that being said, let's start building your blog. All right, now in order to take advantage of Bluehost's exclusive offer for WordPress users, you have a couple options. If you're watching this video on YouTube, just simply click on the Bluehost link within the show notes below. And again, that's an affiliate link. Or if you're watching this video on blogwithbin.com, simply click on the resources tab in the menu at the top of the screen. And this will take you to my resources page. And as you can see, I list all the tools and resources that I use on a daily basis that have helped me find success online. Now, whenever you have some extra time, I really encourage you to take a closer look at everything on this page. But in this tutorial, we're going to be setting up your web hosting account. So to get started, simply click on the Try Bluehost button. And as you can see, this is a special offer for WordPress users. By using my affiliate link, you'll get a free domain name, a free SSL certificate, access to the one-click WordPress install feature, and 24-7 technical support, all for only $3.95 per month. Plus, because this package is optimized for WordPress, your web host servers come with proven performance, reliability, and functionality that will give your blog a strong foundation for long-term success. Bluehost web hosting coupled with WordPress blogging software is by far one of the strongest blogging platforms available. So to get started, simply click on the green Get Started Now button. And that's gonna take us to the Select Your Plan page. And as you can see, you have three separate options here. You have the Basic, Plus, and Prime plan. And again, this is all personal preference and your choice really depends on how you're running your blog or online business. But for this tutorial, we're gonna be using the basic plan, which allows us to host one domain. And I should also mention again, that Bluehost gives us this domain for free, which is pretty cool. But if you plan on having multiple domains and websites, then I highly recommend going with the plus plan. This allows you to host unlimited domains. But again, for this tutorial, we're gonna be going with the basic plan. So once you've decided on what plan you're gonna use, go ahead and click on the green select button. And that'll take us to the sign up page 
where as you can see, you have a couple of different options again. On the left-hand side of the screen is where you'll sign up if you don't have a domain name. And then on the right-hand side of the screen is where you'll sign up if you do have an existing domain. Now I should mention that if you're signing up with an existing domain, there are a couple of extra steps that you'll need to do in order to transfer that domain to Bluehost. However, for this tutorial, we'll be signing up with our brand new free domain name. So if you have an existing domain, you'll still follow along in this video, but after you're done with the tutorial, there are still a few extra steps that you'll need to do in order for your blog to be hosted with Bluehost. Now, luckily, I've made a separate video that walks you through that entire process. It's titled How to Transfer a Domain to Bluehost, and you can access it in the show notes below this video. All right, so for this particular video, we're going to be using our brand new free domain. So on the left hand side of the screen, under New Domain, just type in your desired domain name. And as you're typing this in, you'll also be able to find out if it's available by clicking the next button. And it looks like it is available because it let us go through. And this is going to bring you to the account information page and it's a pretty self-explanatory setup, but this is where you'll enter your account package and credit card information. Now, if you have a Gmail or a Google account, you can bypass this part and just sign in with Google. But for this tutorial, I'm going to create a new account through Bluehost. So I'm going to blur it out while I enter in my personal information. But I wanted to take a second to reiterate why Bluehost is so helpful to the WordPress community and their users. For starters, Bluehost has a 24 seven WordPress support system in place. So if you ever need any additional help or have any questions, they're there for you. They also have a one click WordPress installation feature, which we're gonna be going over in a couple of minutes, but this makes getting your blog up and running a cinch. And they also offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So there are no questions asked. If for any reason you're unsatisfied with the service, you can get your money back. And finally, Bluehost is actually recommended by WordPress. Bluehost and WordPress have worked closely together since 2005 to create a hosting platform that is ideal for running WordPress websites. So honestly, you cannot go wrong. Now the next thing you're going to do is select your package information. And as you can see from the drop down menu, you have a couple of different options here. One thing to keep in mind about the pricing is that the longer the subscription, the lower the monthly price. So if you opt to purchase the 36 month plan, your monthly rate will be cheaper than the 12 month plan. But for this tutorial, we're going to be going with the starter 12 month plan, which is only 545 per month. And once you've selected your plan, you have the option of adding some additional features to your plan. Now these are 100% optional, but I highly recommend that you at least select the domain privacy protection add-on. Reason being, anytime you purchase a domain, your personal information is viewable on the Whois directory, meaning anyone can find your personal information. However, with the domain privacy protection add-on, that will keep your personal information safe and secure and will make it undetectable. So it's totally worth the 99 cents per month in my opinion. Next, I also recommend the Komodo Positive SSL bundle. Now, you already get the free SSL certificate by signing up with my affiliate link in this video, but the Komodo Positive SSL bundle gives you additional protection. It's really a peace of mind thing, and if you have the budget for it, I highly recommend getting it. But if you don't want to purchase any of the add-ons, you can get your 12-month hosting plan for about $65 per year. That's an amazing deal. And if you set your lifestyle blog up the way that I show you in this video, you can easily make that $65 back in less than a week. Your blog can literally pay for itself. But for this blog, I'm going to purchase the domain privacy protection and the Komodo Positive SSL bundle with my hosting plan. That's going to put me a little over $100 for the year, but again, my blog can easily make that back if I monetize it. Now, another thing I want to point out is that Bluehost is extremely transparent with their pricing, which is why I use and recommend them. As you can see, they display your price as you're deciding on which package to purchase. This also gives you peace of mind and the upfront pricing assures you that there will be no surprises with your bill.
All right, next, you're gonna select your payment option and enter your billing information. You can either pay by credit card or PayPal, which is pretty convenient, but one thing I should mention is that you'll be billed annually, and all that means is that you'll be billed once a year for your hosting plan. And as you can see from my Bluehost email receipt, let me pull it up real quick. I purchased the basic 12 month starter plan that comes with the free SSL certificate and free domain name, but I purchased the domain privacy protection add-on and my total cost was $77.28 per year, which comes out to $6.44 per month. That's less than $100 to have your own website. There are design companies and freelancers that charge anywhere from $400 to $10,000 just to build a WordPress website. We're gonna be doing it for less than $100. That is unreal. All right, so once you've entered all the required information, just go ahead and click the small box confirming that you've read and agree to the terms of service and then click on the green submit button. Next, you'll see some special offers available from Bluehost. Now you do have the option to add these features to your hosting plan, but for this tutorial, we're just gonna select no thanks. The next page is the account confirmation section. One thing to note is that Bluehost conveniently emails you all this information. And as you can see from my confirmation email, Bluehost provides all the specifics of my hosting account within this email. So be sure to keep an eye out for it and always keep this information in a safe and secure location. Now the next thing you'll wanna do is create a password for your account. So go ahead and click the create your password button. and then you'll be taken to a page where you'll manage your password. And again, you have a couple options whenever it comes to selecting a password. You can either create your own or you can have Bluehost generate a password for you. I recommend letting Bluehost generate your password. So go ahead and click the Suggest Password button. And as you can see, Bluehost will generate a very strong password for you. Now again, I highly recommend that you copy and paste this password in a safe and secure location, like an Excel spreadsheet or a separate file. It's just a good idea to always have a backup of your passwords. Now I'm gonna click suggest your password again so that I can create a password and blur it out. That way thousands of people watching this video won't have my password. All right, and then once you have your password, go ahead and check the small box confirming that you've read and agreed to the terms of service, and then click the blue next button. And once we've created our password, let's go ahead and log into our account. So go ahead and click the blue login button. And we're in. Now, what you're looking at is your Bluehost cPanel. I like to think of this as home base for your website. And as you can see, there are a lot of great resources and features that come with your cPanel. But for this tutorial, we're gonna be focusing on installing WordPress. So, in order to get started with WordPress, simply click on the Website tab at the top of the screen. And then on the next page, you'll see some of the other content management systems available. However, from my experience in the digital marketing space, I always recommend WordPress if you're implementing a blogging platform. So let's go ahead and click on the Install Now link in the WordPress section. Next, you may see an intro to the Bluehost Marketplace. Bluehost has a partnership with Mojo, which is a WordPress theme and template company, but we're not gonna be using any of those products for this tutorial. So go ahead and click the Continue Installation button. Next, we're gonna select the domain for installation. But before we install WordPress, I wanna point something out. As you can see, you have a few options whenever it comes to installing WordPress. You can either do it yourself for free or you can pay them to do it for you. I just wanted to reiterate that what you're learning from this free Blog With Ben blogging course, other companies are charging $400 for the exact same information. So hopefully by seeing this, you can appreciate the value that I'm trying to provide 
to future bloggers. All right, so now that my public service announcement is out of the way, let's install WordPress. So next, we're gonna select a domain that we're going to install. So go ahead and click on where it says domain and a drop down menu should appear. Now I should mention that you have a few options here. The first is a temporary domain that Bluehost gives you. This will look a little funky and it'll have different letters and numbers and it contains my username. So I'm gonna go ahead and blur it out. But you can go ahead and ignore that domain. Directly below that, you'll have the option of installing the www or the non-www version of your domain. This is a personal preference, but I'm going to select the www version. Next, we want to create our file directory. And since this domain is our primary domain, go ahead and leave this field blank. And then click the green Next button. Give it a couple of seconds to load. All right, last step, we're almost there. Next, we wanna create our WordPress admin information. Now, each field is required in order to move forward, so let's go ahead and fill each one of them out. So the first one is your blog's title. So simply enter the name or title of your blog. On a side note, you can change this once you've installed WordPress. So if you decide you wanna change the title in the future, you can easily do that. Next, you'll create your WordPress admin username. And this is gonna be the username you'll use to log into your WordPress dashboard. Quick tip, make sure it's unique and try not to include the word admin within your admin username. Then enter your admin email, and this is where you'll receive emails regarding your WordPress account. Next, you'll wanna create your admin password. Now, you'll have the ability to create a much stronger password once you fully install WordPress, but for now, I recommend creating a unique admin password. Finally, check all three of the boxes and then click the green Next button and give it a few more seconds to load. and we're on our way. Now, on the next screen, you'll see that your WordPress install has begun. At the top of your screen, you have the ability to monitor the progress of the installation. Now, this could take a few seconds all the way up to a few minutes, but as soon as the blue bar at the top of the screen turns green, you'll know that your install is complete. Now, one thing I also wanna mention is that Bluehost has an overall site progress bar showing you a percentage of where you're at in the overall building process. You can ignore this because even whenever we're done installing WordPress, it's still gonna say that you're only 50% finished. And that's because they would like you to use their WordPress themes. Now, there's nothing wrong with their themes, but we're gonna be using our own theme for this tutorial. So don't think that we're forgetting a step whenever it says that you're only 50% finished with your blog. I can assure you that we're gonna complete everything in this video. So we'll give it a few more seconds. And voila, it's green and our installation is complete. Now, in order to access your WordPress login information, click on the view credentials link at the top of the screen and you'll be able to see your WordPress username and password. Now, as you can see, your WordPress installation is complete. Your login information is listed below. All of this information will be emailed to you, but it's a good idea to copy and paste it to a separate spreadsheet or file just to be safe. Now, in a few seconds, I'm gonna show you how to log into your WordPress admin account. This is the first step in actually creating your blog. But before we do anything, I highly recommend that you verify your email address with Bluehost and activate your domain. You have 15 days to do this, but if you forget for some reason, your domain will be deactivated. Not cool. So let's go ahead and take care of this before we go any further. So Bluehost will send you an email after you've set everything up titled who is verification for your domain simply click on the green verify your email button and within a few seconds you should receive a notification that your email has been verified now if you haven't received this email within 24 hours just reach out to bluehost customer service and they'll happily activate your domain all right so in order to log into our wordpress dashboard you'll want to click on the install location url 
and this will take you to your WordPress admin login page. Now you'll notice that the URL of this page is a little different than your regular URL, and that's because this page is what you're gonna use whenever you log into WordPress. Now a quick way to access your WordPress login page is to simply add wp-admin after your domain. So anytime you need to make a change or update your blog, you'll want to use this wp-admin URL. Using this URL will redirect you to the login page and allow you to access the back end of your blog. So with that being said, let's log into WordPress. So we're just gonna use the username and password that was just given to us. And click the login button. Give it a few seconds. Boom, congratulations. You are in, you now have one of the most powerful and robust blogging platforms available. What you're looking at right now is your WordPress dashboard. And I like to think of this as being home base for your blog. So anytime you wanna make a change, update, or publish a blog post, you'll do so through the WordPress dashboard. Now we're gonna cover all of this in the next section, but for now, you should be proud and excited that your blog is built on such a solid foundation. Now before we start making changes, go ahead and click the I don't need help link, because we're gonna be doing it ourselves in this video, and you'll get a much better view of the dashboard. Now it might look a little cluttered, but you can easily customize this and move things around. So with that being said, let's move on to the next section of the video and make some adjustments to your blog so that you can set yourself up for success. In this section of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to set up your WordPress blog for success. Not only will you be getting some hands-on experience with your WordPress dashboard, but you'll also be laying the foundation for a successful blog. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of building your blog, there are a few house cleaning tips that I always recommend doing prior to publishing your first blog post. These tips are merely recommendations and by no means do you have to set up your blog exactly like I do, but from my experience, these tips have been very beneficial to my blog's overall growth strategy and they've helped me achieve a much stronger blogging foundation in the process. Now in this video, I'm gonna walk you through those tips and show you the seven things that I always do before I start a blog. So let's take a closer look at what those seven things are. Number one, change permalink settings. This is where we'll change the permalink structure to something that's more attractive and more SEO friendly. This will improve the aesthetics, usability, and forward compatibility of your links. If you're shaking your head right now, no worries. We're gonna cover it all in the video. Number two, disable comments. This tip is pretty self-explanatory and it's definitely a personal preference, but I choose not to have comments on my blog for a few different reasons, and this tip will show you how to disable comments altogether. However, if you wanna give people the opportunity to comment on your blog, you can go ahead and skip this tip. Number three, update Gravatar. This is where we'll update the profile and image that will be used for your Gravatar account. We'll get into the specifics of why it's important to have later on in the video, but your Gravatar is a key component to your WordPress platform. Number four, delete unnecessary plugins. WordPress pre-installs some pretty unnecessary plugins. For example, the Hello Dolly plugin displays Hello Dolly song lyrics in the top right-hand side of your screen. It's virtually useless and eats up space. So this tip will show you how to get rid of those plugins that you're not going to use. Number five, install recommended plugins. Now I always try to stay away from adding too many plugins to my blogs, but there are a few plugins that I always recommend adding to your blog's infrastructure. This tip will cover those plugins and show you what I always use before I start a blog. Number six, update site title. Now once again, by default, WordPress prenames your site and predetermines your tagline. This tip will show you how to personalize your site title and tagline so that it coincides with your blog's content. And then finally, change display name. I'll show you how to change the way that your name is displayed whenever you author a blog post. This gives you some flexibility whenever it comes to how your name is publicly displayed online. So with that being said, let's start with number one and change the permalink structure of your blog. Now in this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna actually learn our way around the WordPress dashboard and set up a strong foundation before we start putting content online. Now it's easy to get excited once you finally get your web hosting set up, but a lot of people jump the gun and start publishing content without getting their digital foundation set up properly. It's extremely important that we set ourselves up for success before we publish our first blog post. So before we start publishing content online, let's take a closer look at the WordPress dashboard and set a strong foundation for our blog. 
So the first thing that we're going to do is reconfigure our permalink settings. Now, if you're brand new to blogging, you're probably unfamiliar with what a permalink is. So let me give you a quick rundown of what permalinks are and why they're important. By definition, a permalink is a static hyperlink to a particular web page or blog post. All it really is, though, is it's the URL of the content that you're publishing on your WordPress blog. These are the links that you're going to be sharing with the world whenever you want to share your content. And these are the URLs that people will enter into their browsers whenever they want to view one of your pages. That's why it's very important for these links to be set up properly. Now the WordPress default permalink setting looks like this. This is not very user friendly and it's horrible for SEO. You want your links to be clean and optimized for search engines. And the best way to do that is to have a URL structure that contains keywords. So in order to change the permalink settings, simply hover your mouse over settings and click on permalinks. And this will bring you to the permalink settings menu. Now, as you can see, WordPress offers you the ability to create a custom URL structure for your permalinks. Now, the permalink setting I highly recommend you use is post name. This generates a short, memorable, and SEO-friendly URL that's based off the title of each of your blog posts. So, for example, if your blog post is called Learn to Cook in 5 Minutes, the URL for that post would be bensblogvideo.com forward slash learn to cook in 5 minutes much better than the default setting that WordPress starts you out with. So to change the Premier League settings, simply click on the post name circle and then click on the save changes button. And that has changed our Premier League setting. And let's take a look at it really quickly, show you a quick example. If we go to a sample post, you can see here the post title, Hello World, is now in the Premier League structure. So the link is now binsblogvideo.com forward slash hello world. Now, if you take a look at this before and after example, you can see the new permalink is a lot cleaner, more user-friendly, and it's optimized for search engines. Next, we're going to turn the comments off. Now, I know a lot of people may disagree with me on this one, and that's fine, but I personally choose not to allow comments on my blog. Now, if you want to give people the opportunity to comment on your blog, that's totally fine. Just go ahead and skip this step. But like I said, I prefer to turn the comments off. So in order to do that, you're gonna to have to go to your dashboard and click the turn comments on or off link. And that'll bring you to the discussion settings. And this is where you can configure various aspects of the comments settings. But for this tutorial, we're simply gonna be turning them off. So uncheck all the boxes. And click the Save Changes button at the bottom of the screen. Give it a few seconds and we're good to go. Perfect. Moving on, let's update your Gravatar. So real quick, I'm going to go back to the dashboards. Just go ahead and click on the dashboard and that'll bring you back to kind of the home base of everything. All right, perfect. Now, Updating your Gravatar. If you're new to a Gravatar, it's basically a globally recognized avatar. It's an image that follows you from site to site, appearing beside your name whenever you do things like comment on a post on a blog. Even if you've turned your comments off, it's always a good idea to have a Gravatar to enhance your online presence and increase your brand recognition. Now, real quick, here's an example of my Gravatar. And as you can see, the Gravatar displays my image next to my comment. Gravatars help identify your comments on blogs and web forms. Here's how it works. You basically upload an image and create your profile just once. Then whenever you participate in any Gravatar enabled site, your Gravatar image will automatically follow you there. Gravatar is a free service for site owners, developers, and users, and is automatically included in every WordPress account. So to see if you already have a Gravatar within your dashboard, just go ahead and click on users and then click on your profile. And then if you scroll down to where it says profile picture, if a picture is showing, then you have a Gravatar. But chances are that you don't, especially if this is your first WordPress blog. But setting up Gravatars in your site are very easy to do. And like I said, once you sign up once, upload a picture, anytime you comment on any Gravatar supported blogs or websites, your Gravatar comes along for the ride. It's pretty cool. So real quick, to get started, you're going to want to head over to gravatar.com. And this is their homepage. 
for the service, but again, it's free. Go ahead and click on Create Your Own Gravatar. And this will bring you to the sign up process. Now you are gonna to need to sign up for a free wordpress.com account, but again, it's free. And I'm not gonna walk you through the entire sign up process because it's pretty self-explanatory, but once you've created an account, within a few minutes, you'll have your WordPress Gravatar set up and ready to represent you across the web. Next, we wanna delete some of the plugins that come pre-installed with your WordPress blog. Now that's not to say that they aren't useful, but for a food blog, these plugins will just take up valuable space that can be better utilized for other aspects of your blog. So on the left-hand side of the screen in the dashboard, click on where it says plugins. And this will bring you to your plugin management menu. And this is where you can add, delete, and deactivate plugins on your WordPress blog. Now, like I previously mentioned, WordPress starts you off with some unnecessary plugins, in my opinion. So to get rid of these plugins and free up some space, simply click on the deactivate link under each plugin that you want to get rid of. and then you may get a pop-up notification for some of these plugins asking for some feedback. You can go ahead and click other, or if you do have some feedback, go ahead and fill it out, but then click the submit and deactivate button. And then go ahead and click deactivate on the remaining plugins. So I'm gonna get rid of the WP Forms Lite, the Optin Monster, the Mojo Marketplace, and if you already have Jetpack and Hello Dolly activated, I recommend that you deactivate those. And the Google Analytics for WordPress, I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate that for this tutorial. And there we go. Now that we've deactivated all the plugins, go ahead and click and check mark the boxes next to the plugins that we just deactivated. And then from the Bulk Actions drop-down menu, go ahead and click on that and then select delete, and then click the apply button, and you'll get a pop-up notification asking if you're positive that you wanna delete these, go ahead and click okay, and there they go. All right, moving on. Next, let's install the recommended plugins. Now, like I said in the intro, I always try to stay away from adding too many plugins to my blogs, but there are a few plugins that I always recommend adding. Now, if you're new to the idea of plugins, WordPress plugins are bits of software that can be uploaded to your blog. Their purpose is to extend and expand the functionality of your WordPress site, and there are literally thousands of plugins to choose from. Now, if you visit my resources page on blogwithbin.com, you can get a much better idea of the plugins that I recommend for starting a digital business. But for this video, I'll walk you through the process of adding a few plugins so that you'll know how to install the plugins that you feel are best for your blog. Now before we start the installation process, I recommend that you either follow along step by step or write down the names of these plugins so that you can install them all at once before you start customizing your blog. All right, so to start adding plugins, simply click on the plugin link on the left-hand side of the screen within the dashboard, and that's gonna bring you back to your plugin management menu if you're not already there. Then to start adding plugins, simply click on the add new button at the top of the screen. And this will bring you to where you could search through the available plugins. Now, I'm gonna walk you through the process of installing and activating the recommended plugins. Then once they're all activated, I'll show you how to configure them. Now, as you can see, we have the option of filtering our search by featured, popular, recommended, and favorites. And if you have some time, I recommend browsing through the different plugins to get a better idea of what is available. But for this tutorial, I already know the plugins that I wanna install. So in the upper right-hand side of the screen where it says search plugins, let's type in the name of the first plugin we're gonna install. So go ahead and type in Yoast within that search plugin field. And once the search results populate, it should be the very first plugin listed. Now the Yoast SEO plugin is my number one recommended plugin when it comes to SEO and starting any type of blog. It's an essential component to building a strong SEO foundation and will help take care of a lot of the technical aspects of SEO so that you can focus on what's important, your blog. So to install and activate this plugin, simply click the install now button.
There we go. And once it's installed, you'll be able to activate it from the same screen. So go ahead and click on the activate button and then you should be taken back to your plugin management menu where you can see that the plugin has been successfully added to your list of activated plugins. Now, once the Yoast SEO plugin is activated, you may get a notification from Yoast telling you that there are issues concerning your SEO. You can go ahead and ignore this for now because we'll address it whenever we configure the plugin later on in the tutorial. All right, let's add another plugin. So to do so, go ahead and click the Add New button, the top of the screen. And then in the search bar, type in Simple Social Icons. And this is the plugin that we're going to be using for our social media strategy, specifically to grow our audience. And there it is. So go ahead and follow the same steps as before. Click the Install Now button. And then click Activate. And we're good to go. All right, let's add another plugin. So once again, we'll click the Add New button. And then in the search bar, we're going to type in Recent Posts. And the plugin you want is called Recent Post Widget with Thumbnails by Martin Steele. I think is how you pronounce the last name. But this plugin is actually recommended by the themes developers, and it will allow us to display your recent posts in a cool and unique way within the sidebar of your blog. So let's go ahead and click the Install Now button and click Activate. There we go. All right, let's add another plugin. Again, same steps as before. Click the Add New button. And then in the search bar, type in WP Recipe Maker. And there it is. Now this plugin is going to give you the ability to beautifully display recipes within your blog posts. And if you're a food blogger and you want to share recipes, this is a must have. So go ahead and follow the same steps as before. Click install now and the blue activate button. Now once this plugin is activated, it'll take you to its settings menu. You can go ahead and ignore this because I'm going to show you how to configure the plugin a little later on in the video. All right, let's add another plugin. So on the left hand side of your screen, hover your mouse over plugins and click add new. And then this time in the search bar, you're going to want to type in jQuery. That's all one word. And the plugin you want is called jQuery Pin It Button for images by, and I'm going to butcher this name, Martian Zizipig. <laughs> now, I'm totally guessing on how to say that name, but this plugin will allow you to add Pinterest buttons to our images so that people can easily share your content across Pinterest. So once again, follow the same steps. Click the Install Now button and activate it. And just like before, um, once this plugin is activated, it's going to take you to the settings page. And you'll feel free to check it out if you want. But I just use the default settings for this tutorial. So, you know, we're all set with this plugin for now. Let's add the next plugin. So, just like before, go ahead and hover your mouse over plugins on the left hand side of your WordPress dashboard and click on Add New. Then in the search bar, type in contact form. And the plugin we want is called Contact Form 7. This plugin lets you easily display contact forms on your blog and gives your readers a way to get in touch with you. This is an essential component to any professional blogger or digital entrepreneur. Let's go ahead and install and activate this plugin. There we go. All right, let's install our final plugin. So click the Add New button. And then in the search bar, type in 
child theme. And the plugin we want is called Child Theme Configurator. And this plugin is going to let you create a child theme. Now, if you're new to child themes and you're scratching your head, no worries. I'm going to explain it in greater detail a little later on. But for now, let's install the plugin. So just like before, click the Install Now button and then go ahead and activate it. Perfect. All right, moving on. Next, let's update the site title and tagline of your blog. Now, just like everything with WordPress, there are a couple different ways to handle this, but let me show you what I'm talking about first. Your site title and tagline are used a few different ways on your blog, one being in the tab of the browser. And if we fast forward to the completed blog real quick, you could see what I'm talking about. There we go. The site title and tagline help the reader distinguish which tab is what, and it creates a good user experience. Next, it's also used as the header slash logo for the entire blog. Now, we're going to be changing this, but if you want to keep it, it will be important that your site title and tagline are correct. It's also used in the search engine snippets. And this is important when it comes to SEO, and it also creates a good user experience as well. All right, so back at our dashboard, you'll want to hover your mouse over Settings, and click on general and this will bring us to our general settings page and if you look at the top of the page you can see that the site title and tagline default settings are set to kale and just another WordPress site this is pretty generic and you'll want to change it so in order to change it to something that coincides with your blog's content in the text box next to site title type in the preferred name of your blog, and then directly below that, add a catchy tagline. Then scroll to the bottom of the screen, click the Save Changes button, and your site title and tagline are now updated. You should get a notification that your settings have been saved, and then let's check it out. So on the upper left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over the blog title and click Visit Site. And there we go. As you can see, our site title and tagline are being used, ready to go. Now, if you're still seeing kale as the site title on your blog, no worries. We're gonna fix that when we update the header a little later on. But for now, your site title and tagline are updated across your entire blog. All right, moving on. Next, let's change the display name. So in order to do this, we're gonna to need to go back to our dashboard. So in the upper left-hand side of the screen, click on Dashboard. All right, so now we're gonna change how our name is displayed across our blog. And what I mean by this is whenever we first installed WordPress, we were given the option of creating a username. This username is also used for our display name, which is the name that's shown whenever we author a blog post. So that's not pretty cool if you want the world to see your username. So when I say that we're changing the display name, we're essentially changing the way our name is displayed across our blog. So the first thing you wanna do is hover your mouse over your display name in the upper right-hand side of the screen, and then click on the Edit My Profile link. And this will bring you to your profile settings where you have the ability to customize certain aspects of your profile, one of them being how your name is publicly displayed. So there are two things I always change. First, I change the nickname and then the display name. So on the left-hand side of the screen, next to where it says nickname, I'm gonna enter in the name that I wanna use for my display name, and then directly below that where it says display name publicly as, I'm gonna select that name that I just entered. Perfect. Now that that's set, go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the screen and click the update profile button. There we go, and as you can see, profile has been saved and our display name is displaying correctly. Perfect, moving on. All right, in this section of the tutorial, we're gonna go over how to install a free WordPress theme to your blog. Now, the right WordPress theme can go a long way in your blog's success, and this portion of the video will show you how to turn a boring layout into a sleek, innovative, and mobile responsive design. So anytime you need to make a change to your blog, you're gonna do so through your WordPress dashboard, and that's what you're looking at right now. I like to think of this as being home base for your blog. 
Now, in this video, we're gonna be installing a free theme. So the first thing you wanna do is hover your mouse over appearance and then click on themes. And this will bring you to your theme management menu. This is where you can add new themes, change your current theme, and search for additional themes all from this menu. Now, we're gonna be adding a new theme, so to get started, simply click on the add new theme icon. And this is gonna bring us to the WordPress theme directory. And basically, this is where we can browse through the thousands of different themes that WordPress has to offer. Now, if you look in the upper left-hand side of the screen, you can see that WordPress offers some filters to help you find that perfect theme. And this lets you break the themes down by featured, popular, latest, and there's also a feature filter section. And this is where you can get even more specific if you have a particular feature or requirement of your theme in mind. It's a great way to filter through the themes and find exactly what you're looking for. Another way to find a theme is to use their search function. And this works the same as any search bar and it's a great way to find a theme if you already know the name of it like we do. So in the upper right hand side of the screen where it says search themes, go ahead and type in kale and that'll bring up the search results. And as you can see, our theme is the first one. But before you install any theme, I highly recommend that you preview the theme just so that you can get a better idea of how it functions. So to check out the demo, simply hover your mouse over the theme and where it says details and preview, go ahead and click on that. And that's gonna bring you to the demo. Now, keep in mind that this is just a basic demo of what the theme can do and some of its capabilities, but again, this gives you a good idea of how the theme behaves and it gives you a good feel for the user experience as well. Now, if you look in the upper left-hand side of the screen, you'll notice that each theme displays their user ratings in a short description, which can help in the decision-making process. And as you can see, this theme has a five-star rating, which is absolutely perfect, and that is good for us. So let's go ahead and install this theme. So simply click on the blue Install button at the top of the screen. And once it's installed, click the Activate button and this will officially activate the theme and make it visible on the blog. Now let's go ahead and check it out. So after the theme has been installed and activated, you should see a splash notification with a link to visit the site. Go ahead and click on that visit site link. And as you can see, the new theme is ready to go. All right, congratulations. You now have a theme that will allow you to harness the full potential of the WordPress blogging platform, but we still have a lot of work to do. Next, let's customize this theme and turn it into a work of digital art. So the first part of the design process is configuring the plugins we just installed. Reason being is that they play a big part in how our blog is presented online. Plus by configuring your plugins, it will allow you to have a much more efficient and secure digital platform for starting a blog. All right, so the first plugin we're gonna configure is the Akismet plugin. And this plugin checks your comments and contact form submissions against their global database of spam to prevent your site from malicious content. Simply put, the Akismet anti-spam plugin blocks spammers from commenting on your blog. So to get started, go ahead and click on the plugin link on the left-hand side of the screen. And then we wanna activate the plugin, so click the activate link underneath the Akismet anti-spam plugin. Next, you'll need an API key in order for the plugin to connect to your blog. So go ahead and click on the Akismet settings page link. And this will take you to the Akismet account settings. Then to get the API key, click on the get your API key button and you'll be taken to the Akismet homepage. Next, click on the get an Akismet API key button and then you'll be prompted to sign up for a wordpress.com account if you already don't have one. This is a free account and it's not going to affect your current wordpress.org account, but you'll need it in order to access the Akismet plugin. Now I already have an account, so I'm just gonna log in, but if you need an account, simply pause the video, go through the account setup process. It's free and it's pretty self-explanatory.
Now, once logged in, you may see a pricing table, but don't freak out. You can get the free version. So just go ahead and click on the Get Basic button. Then at the subscription page, you'll have the option to donate to the creators of the plugin. You can do this, but for now, I'm just gonna slide this all the way to the left so that we get it for free. Then click the Continue button. And it's processing. There we go. And you should get a pop-up saying that it's ready to go. Click that Activate This Site button. And our API key is updated and ready to go. So then finally, just click the Save Changes button. And the Akismet plugin is now protecting your blog from spam. All right, moving on. Next, we're gonna create a child theme. This is by far one of the most important aspects of building a WordPress blog because it could save you a ton of time and headaches due to the updates that are made to the parent theme. Now, if you're new to the concept, a child theme is a theme that inherits the functionality of the parent theme, which is the initial theme that we just installed a few moments ago. Now, the reason that a child theme is so important is because it allows you to modify or add to the functionality of a parent theme. It's hands down the best, safest, and easiest way to modify an existing theme because instead of modifying the parent theme files directly, you can create a child theme and override them within. Here's a quick example of why you should have a child theme. If you don't have a child theme, every change you make could potentially be lost whenever there's an update to the parent theme. But with a child theme, your changes are safe and you'll still inherit the functionality of the parent theme. Basically, if you're going to be customizing your theme, you need to have a child theme. Now, there are a few ways to go about creating a child theme, but for this video, we're gonna be using our trusty plugin, the Child Theme Configurator. This super light plugin makes creating a child theme super simple. All right, so to get started, hover your mouse over Tools on the left-hand side of the screen and click on Child Theme. There we go, and this will bring you to the settings page. One thing I love about this plugin is that they recently made an update that streamlines the process and makes it super easy to go through and understand. All right, so the plugin does a really good job of visually walking you through the process. As you can see, they have numbered circles outlining each step. So step one, select an action. So we're gonna create a new child theme. Since this is our first child theme, just make sure that that's selected. There we go. Next step two, you'll wanna select the parent theme that you're gonna be using to create the child theme. So make sure that that drop down menu has Kale selected. There we go. Next, click the Analyze button. And this new feature does a ton of the heavy lifting and sets up the theme settings for you. And once the plugin is done analyzing your theme, you should get a notification and a green check mark letting you know that the theme is okay to use as a child theme. Next, you'll see that a bunch of other steps have opened up below you. Now you can go ahead and leave the default settings alone for step four, five, and six, but if you scroll down to step number seven and click on the child theme attributes button, you'll have the ability to update how the attributes are shown within your theme. And again, this is where you can change the name, author, theme descriptions, etc., if you want to. Next, step number eight, copies any menus, widgets, and other customized settings from the parent theme. Now, we haven't made any changes to the parent theme's menus and widgets, so we can go ahead and leave this blank. Next, we'll wanna create the child theme. So go ahead and click the Create New Child Theme button. And boom, we now have a child theme. You should get a couple of green check marks notifying that all is well. All right, then before we activate the theme, we'll want to preview it to make sure everything looks normal. So at the top of the screen, click on the preview your child theme link. And then you'll be able to preview the new theme in action. 
Now, you're probably noticing that the layout and text of the child theme looks a lot different than what we started out with, and that's because we need to make one more quick change to the code within the child theme. But don't worry, it's super simple, and the only requirement is that you know how to copy and paste. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna save and activate the child theme. So go ahead and click the save and activate button. There we go. Next, let's get the code. So long story short, what we need to do is update the kale child theme functions.php file with some new code. This is a one-time thing, and once we add the new code, our child theme will behave like the original parent theme. So you can get the code a few different ways, but for this video, we're gonna use GitHub. This is a free resource for sharing code, notes, and snippets online. I've put a link to this URL in the show notes, but the first thing you'll have to do is go to this URL and copy the code. So to copy it, just simply highlight it and on your keyboard, I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna hit Command C and then I'm gonna to wanna to go back to the dashboard and then to add it to the child theme, hover your mouse over Appearance and then click Editor. And this will bring you to the theme editor. Now, if this is your first time to the editor, let me give you a quick rundown. The built-in theme editor allows you to view or change the code within your theme. The particular file contents are displayed in the large text or edit box on the left-hand side of the screen. Next, the name of the theme that's being edited will be displayed at the top of the text box, as well as the select theme to edit drop-down menu. So make sure that you're editing the correct theme before you make any changes. Next on the right hand side of the screen is a list of the theme template or style sheet files that can be edited. Now if you want to edit a file, simply click on the file and make your changes within the text box. Now a word of caution though, you'll want to be very careful while you're editing PHP files. The editor does not make backup copies, so if you introduce an error that crashes your site, you cannot use the editor to fix the problem. So be very careful as you're making changes. All right, so to fix the child theme so that it looks like the parent theme, you're gonna to wanna to paste that code that we just copied from GitHub within the theme functions file, which is named functions.php. So go ahead and click on the theme functions file to open it up. There we go. And then within the text box on the left, simply replace the current code with the code that you copied from GitHub. So just highlight it and paste the code Perfect. Next, click the blue update button to push the new code into production. And you should get a notification at the top of your screen letting you know that the file has been edited successfully. Now let's check it out. So let's visit the site. Perfect, and the code has worked. The child theme now mirrors the parent theme and it's ready to be used. All right, moving on. Next, let's configure the Yoast SEO plugin. Now, the Yoast SEO plugin is one of my most highly recommended plugins, and it's helped my blog rank in the search engines. Best of all, it's 100% free. So, first things first, like I said, we need to configure it. So, to get started, hover your mouse over SEO and then click Dashboard. And this will bring you to your Yoast SEO dashboard. And if this is your first time using the plugin, you should see a few notifications. The first is a problem stating that you're blocking access to robots. This is normal, uh, the WordPress default setting, and we'll take care of that at the end of the video, so you can ignore that. The next two notifications have to do with the configuration wizard in Google Search Console. We're not gonna worry about Google Search Console in this video, but we will be taking care of the Yoast configuration wizard. So, to configure the plugin at the top of the screen, go ahead and click on the tab that says General. And then click on the button that says Open the Configuration Wizard. And this will bring you to the Yoast SEO Configuration Wizard, obviously. Now, the following steps are going to help you configure your, uh, your SEO settings to match your blog's needs. And Yoast they offer a paid configuration service that does this for you, but I'm gonna walk you through that process step by step and save you some time and money right now. So go ahead and click on the Configure Yoast SEO button. 
There we go. All right, so the first step is determining which environment your blog is in. Reason being, the plugin wants to know if your site should be indexed by the search engines. And when they say environment, all they want to know is whether or not your blog is live or under construction. So since we're in the process of building our site, we'll select option B. But if your site is already live, then go ahead and select option A. Either way, I'm going to show you how to activate it once your blog is ready to publish. But like I said, since we're in the beginning phase of building our blog, we don't want it to be indexed. So we'll select option B for now and then click the next button. Next is site type. And this is pretty obvious. You'll want to select blog and then click the next button. Next, Yoast is trying to determine whether or not you're a company or a person. So if you're a person, select person and type in your name. And if you're a company, select company and type in the name of your company and add your logo and then click the next button. Next are the social media profiles. So go ahead and add all the relevant social profiles that Yoast can let the search engines know about your social networks. And this also enhances your social metadata. And go ahead and click the next button again. Next is the post type visibility. And unless you have specific requirements, I recommend leaving this as is and clicking the next button. Next is the multiple authors section. And if you're gonna have multiple people writing blog posts, select yes. And if it's just you, select no. And then obviously click the next button. All right, next is the Google Search Console section, and this is where you can connect your Search Console account with the Yoast SEO plugin. This is a very powerful option, and if you have a Search Console account set up, I highly recommend doing this step. But since we're just setting up the plugin, go ahead and skip this one. You can always come back and connect your accounts later on. So go ahead and click the next button. And now we're at the title settings. This is where you can change the website name that Yoast will display to the search engines and the symbol it will use as your title separator. I like it as is, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click the next button. Next, Yoast wants to know if you'd like to subscribe to their newsletter. I recommend signing up, it's super helpful, keeps you up to date with everything that's going on uh, in the SEO, SEO world, and it's free. So decide if you wanna sign up or not, and then click next. And they have a couple other promos. Check them out, click next, and congrats. Your Yoast SEO plugin has been configured, and now Yoast will take care of all the technical aspects of SEO for your blog. This is gonna improve your blog's overall performance and the search results, and it'll give you some peace of mind whenever it comes to SEO. All right, so go ahead and click the close button. And moving on. And next, we're gonna configure the jQuery Pinterest button. Now this plugin lets you create a Pinterest share button that displays on the images within your blog. It's a great way to expand your blog's reach and it allows your content to be much more shareable, which is always a good thing. All right, so back at the plugin management menu, in order to configure this plugin, you need to get to the settings page. Now I recommend leaving everything as is, but if you want to change how the button looks, this is how you do it. All right, so go ahead and click on the settings link underneath the plugin, and this will bring you to the plugin settings section. Now it looks like a lot, but we're only concerned with the visual features for now. So go ahead and click on the visual tab at the top of the screen. And then as you can see, you have the ability to change how the button looks on your images. You can change the padding and the transparency of the hover effect, the description source, and how the pin image looks on your blog. So where it says pin image, you have the option of changing how the pin image looks on your blog's images. You can change it to the old default setting. You can also change how the button looks. I like it as a square, so I'm gonna leave it as is, but if you made any changes, be sure to click the save and changes button. I'm gonna set it as square, there we go. 
And if you made any changes, like I said, click the Save and Changes button. And then if we fast forward to the end of the video real quick, you can see that the Pinterest Share button appears on your blog post images and it will give your readers the ability to share your content across a very, very powerful social network. All right, moving on next, let's start customizing the theme. All right, now the fun begins. This is where we get to customize your blog and make it a unique work of digital art. Now, I know I say this a lot, but this is one of the main reasons why I recommend WordPress over other companies like Squarespace and Weebly. WordPress gives you the freedom to customize and manipulate the site so that you can make it anything you want. So for starters, let's begin by updating the logo to something that fits our brand. Now, what if we wanted to have a more custom logo, something that stood out and drew attention to our blog? And if we fast forward real quick, you can see the custom logo I made for this blog has a unique feel and it looks a lot different than the standard site title of this theme. Now, you can either pay someone to create a logo for you or you can do it yourself for free. I like saving money, so let's make it ourselves. And one way to make a great looking logo is to use creative font. And if you go to defont.com, I'll put a link to it in the show notes, you can access literally thousands of creative fonts for free. Now, keep in mind that if you plan to use this font for commercial use, you may need to contact the author of the font before doing so. But like I said, Defont has a ton of awesome fonts to choose from. And once you find a font that you like, simply click on the download button and follow the prompt to install the font. And once installed, any application that uses text will now have that specific font as an option. Anything like Microsoft Office or graphic design software. And speaking of design, in order to make a logo using the new font, you'll need to have some sort of graphic design software. A lot of people use Photoshop, but I'm using Pixelmator, which is what you're looking at right now. It basically does the same thing, and it's a lot cheaper. Now, I'm not going to walk you through the process of downloading the font and making a logo, but I wanted to give you an idea of how to get resourceful when it comes to designing a logo for your blog. All right, now that we have our new logo, let's add it to our blog. And I wanna show you how easy this is to do. Now, this particular theme has a spot for your logo that's centered at the top of the page. So the first thing we wanna do is click on Customize at the top of the screen. And this will bring up our theme customization menu. Anytime we need to make some tweaks to our theme, we're gonna do so through this menu. Now to change the logo, click on the Site Identity tab. And this will give us the ability to change a few things within our blog. For now, we're gonna focus on changing the logo. And as you can see, this theme starts you out with a default text logo. It also starts you out with the tagline that is also displayed below the logo. Now, we definitely wanna change that, at least I do. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're going to swap out the logo with the one that we designed. So go ahead and click on the Select Logo button. And this will bring us to our media library. And this is where we'll upload and store the images that we're gonna use on our blog. So to add the image of the new logo, simply click on the Select Files button. Then you'll have the option to find your file. Go ahead and search for that on the computer, there we go. And once you found the file, click the select button at the bottom of the screen. And then you'll have the option to crop it. Go ahead and click the skip cropping button since we're gonna be using the full image. And our logo is ready to use. But as you can see, the default text logo and tagline are still showing. Now this is just a personal preference, but I don't like the tagline showing below the logo. So if you want to remove the tagline, simply uncheck the display site title and tagline box. And then to display the unique image logo we just created, simply flip the switch where it says show image logo at the top of the screen. Go ahead and flip that, turn it on. And voila, we got our new logo, looks great. 
Moving on, the next thing we want to do is add a favicon, or as WordPress calls it now, a site icon. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a favicon is or a site icon, a favicon is the tiny image that web browsers use to help distinguish between web pages. And if we take a look at the top of the screen, you can see what I'm talking about. These images in the tabs are favicons. They're great for branding efforts, and they help people navigate online, which increases the user experience. Additionally, some browsers and mobile devices will display a larger image like the Safari browser, which is what we're looking at right now. The site icon that we're going to create will also be used as a browser and app icon for your blog. So that's why it's important to have a site icon for your branding efforts. All right, back to the blog. So to change the site icon towards the bottom of the site identity module, you'll see the site icon section. This is where you'll add your image for the site icon. Before you choose your icon image, keep in mind that WordPress recommends that you use an image that is at least 512 pixels wide and tall, and that's because the image will be used for your favicon and app icon. Now, if you're wondering how you're going to create this image yourself, don't sweat it. Just head on over to canva.com. It's completely free, and you'll be able to easily create a custom favicon pretty quickly. This website can help you create stunning graphics with their free design software, and I use them quite a bit. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna walk you through the entire process of creating a favicon, but canva.com is definitely an awesome resource that will help you with some of the design elements for your blog. Plus, like I said, it's free. And I'll put a link to their site below this video within the, the show notes. But I highly recommend using it for designing graphics for your blog. All right, so to add the image you're gonna use for the site icon, simply click on the Select Image button and again, this will bring us to our media library. Then click on the Upload Files link at the top of the screen. And then the Select Files button. And we're just going to find the image that we're going to use for the site icon. There we go. And once you've uploaded the image, make sure you select the image and then click the blue select button at the bottom of the screen. There we go. And WordPress is gonna give you a little preview of what it will look like. Looks good. So let's go ahead and click the save and publish button to push those changes live. And we'll X out of here. So click the X. And as you can see, the image I just uploaded is now being used for our favicon. Looks great and looks a lot more professional. All right, moving on. The next thing we want to do is configure our blog by adding additional pages and creating a primary menu. And if we fast forward to the end of this video again, you can see what I'm talking about. Having a primary menu with separate pages allows you to diversify your content and it helps your visitors navigate through your blog. It's not only creating a better user experience, but it's great for SEO as well. So the first thing we want to do is we want to delete that sample page and then create the new pages that we'll use within the primary menu. And as you can see, WordPress starts you off with a sample page, but it's just there to help you visualize what your content will look like within the theme. But again, we want to get rid of this page. So to delete the sample page, we'll go to our WordPress dashboard and then hover your mouse over where it says pages and then click on all pages. And this will bring you to the pages menu. And you'll definitely see the sample page and you may see an additional default page called WP Forms Preview. You'll want to delete both of these pages. So to delete these pages, simply check the boxes next to each page. And then where it says bulk actions, go ahead and click on that drop down menu and select move to trash. And then click the apply button. And there we go, all those pages have been deleted. Next, we want to add our new pages to the blog, and there are a couple ways that you can do that. The first way is at the top of the screen. If you hover your mouse over the plus new link and select page from that drop down, that will let you create a new page. You can also hover your mouse over pages on the left hand side of the screen and select add new, or you can just simply click the add new button at the top of the screen. Each of these options will allow you to add a new page. So we're just going to click the add new button at the top of the screen and this will bring you to the WordPress visual editor. 
Now, before we go any further, I should point out that WordPress is gearing up for a major overhaul to this visual editor. In a few months, they'll be getting rid of this editor that you're looking at right now and will be moving towards a totally different user experience. So if you're watching this video in 2018 and your screen looks a lot different than mine, that's because you're using the new updated version of WordPress. Now you can still get by with this video, but I'll be creating a new tutorial whenever that new WordPress update comes out in 2018. So again, if you're watching Watching this video and the new visual editor has been deployed, I'll have a link in the show notes below this video that will take you to a new tutorial that shows you how to use the new visual editor. But if you're watching this video in 2017, you can stay here and keep moving forward with this tutorial. All right, so this editor is the same editor that you'll use to create your pages and your blog posts, and it's commonly referred to as a WYSIWYG editor, which is an acronym that stands for what you see is what you get. And the thinking behind this acronym is that whatever you type in the content area will be what you see on your blog, but we'll cover that in a couple of minutes. Now, the concept is fairly straightforward. You have a title section where you'll enter your title, a content section where you'll enter the content. Below you'll see the Yoast SEO plugin if you've installed it. Then we have our publishing options, page attributes, and a section for a featured image. All right, so now that you know your way around the visual editor, let's create our about page. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna give our page a title. And since this is our about page, we'll just type about in the title section. And as you can see, the Yoast SEO plugin is already beginning to take care of our Google snippet for us. And keep in mind, this is the snippet that will show up when people search for your page in the search engines. And when you have some more time, I, I really encourage you to edit the snippet and add specific descriptions for each page as well. But for this tutorial, we're just going to focus on creating the pages for now. Now, we're not going to be adding content to the pages just yet. We're simply creating them so that we can add them to our primary menu. Once we have all of our pages, then we'll worry about adding content. All right, so once you've named the page, go ahead and publish the page. And like I said, we'll add content to the page once we've set up our navigation menu. So click the blue Publish button. There we go. And next, we'll just follow the exact same steps to add additional pages. So click the Add Page button at the top of the screen. And let's add the Recipes page. So type in Recipes and then click the blue Publish button. All right, and next let's add the Contact page. So type in contact and then go ahead and publish it. And then finally, we'll add a blog page. So click the add new button and in the title, just name this blog. Go ahead and publish it. There we go. Now, after we've added all the pages, let's go ahead and go back to the home page. So hover your mouse over the blog's title, on the left-hand side of the screen, and click Visit Site. And as you can see, we still need to add our pages to the primary nav menu. There's nothing there. And if we fast forward, you can see how the menu will be displayed. It's clean, it has a minimalist design that looks great, and it presents a good user experience. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is access the menu management page. So go ahead and hover your mouse over your blog's name and then click menus from the drop down. And this will bring you to your menu management page and this is where we can add pages to a menu, change the menu structure, change the settings, the location, the name of our menus and much more. This is home base for building our, our different menus. Now let's go ahead and create our new primary menu and add the pages that we just created. So first click on the create new menu link And then where it says menu name, go ahead and give your menu a title. I'm just going to call this primary menu and then click the create menu button. And now we can start to really configure the settings. So where it says pages, 
simply check the boxes next to the pages that you want to add and click Add to Menu button. Perfect, but what about a home option? I like to give my visitors a way back to the home page within the navigation bar. If we fast forward again, you can see that the primary nav menu has all the pages we just created, but there's also a home page. This creates a friendly user experience and it helps people navigate your blog. So instead of adding a page, we're gonna add a custom link. And again, all this is doing is creating a way for our visitors to get back to our home page through the primary menu. So go ahead and click on custom links. And then once it opens where it says link text, type in home. And again, this will be what appears within the primary menu. Then type in the URL of where you want this part of the menu to take the visitor. Now we want this to take our visitors to the home page, so we'll just type in our primary domain. So whatever your blog's main domain is, you're gonna enter it in this URL field. Then click the Add to Menu button, and you should see the custom link has been added to the menu structure. Perfect. Next, you'll wanna situate the menu items so that they appear the way you want on your live blog. For example, the menu items listed at the top of the menu structure will be the farthest to the left on your blog's nav menu. So I want the home to be the first option of the primary nav, so you can simply drag and drop the menu items so that they coordinate with how you want them to appear on the blog. It's pretty cool. Perfect. Next, be sure to check the menu settings box that says main menu. This ensures that your menu will be shown as your primary menu for your blog. Then click the save menu button. There we go, and then if we visit our blog, go ahead and click Visit Site. Our primary menu is up and running. Awesome, looks great. All right, moving on. Next, let's configure the sidebar. Now, one of the many reasons why I recommend the Kale theme is because of the sleek and minimalist design. Plus, each page has a two-column layout that can be easily customized to your liking. On the left hand side is where we'll add the content and then on the right side is our sidebar. This is where we can add various widgets, links, and images. And keep in mind that the content on each page will be different but the sidebar remains the same throughout the blog. So first things first, let's start customizing our sidebar. So to do so, click on customize at the top of the screen. And again, this will bring us to our customization menu. And then go ahead and click on Widgets. And then click Sidebar Default Bordered. And this is gonna let us configure the sidebar that has a border around it. And let's start adjusting the layout of our sidebar. So the first thing we wanna add is the About Me section. And again, if we fast forward real quick, you can see what we're gonna be building. This is a great way to give your visitors a quick intro of who you are, and it helps establish a trusting relationship between you and your readers. Okay, so first let's add a widget. So go ahead and click on the Add a Widget button, and then you'll see all the widgets that you can add to your sidebar. We're gonna be adding some HTML to the sidebar, so go ahead and select the Custom HTML tab. And this will open up the widget. And as you can see, it's a pretty simple layout. You have a field for your title, which is what will display above the About Me section. And then below that is a text box where you'll enter the code. Now, if you're freaking out because you have no idea how to code or if you're brand new to HTML, no worries. I've created a code cheat sheet for you so that all you have to do is copy and paste. And then we'll make one small adjustment within that code so that it's unique to your blog. So first things first, let's give this widget a title. So I'm gonna call this About Me. Perfect. Now let's add the images and the content. So to do that, we're gonna to need to get out of here and leave. So go ahead and click the Save and Publish button. And then to exit the widget, click the X button, the left-hand side of the screen. There we go. Now for this tutorial, I've created an About Me section that has an image with some content below it and then a signature, which is also an image that I created using Defont.com. And if you fast forward real quick, you can see that we have our image, we have our content, and then another image, which is our signature. 
All right, now before we even touch the HTML code, we wanna add the two images. And I'm gonna add the headshot and the signature images first. So let's go back to our dashboard. So on the left-hand side of the screen, click on Dashboard. And then we're gonna upload those images to the media library. So on the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over Media and click Add New. And this is where we're gonna add the two images for the headshot and the signature. So go ahead and click on the Select Files button and find the file that you wanna use for the headshot image, just like before. And once it's finished uploading, you're gonna to need to know how to access the URL of the image because the HTML code for the About Me widget needs the image URL in order for it to display the image within the sidebar. I know it sounds like a lot, but you'll get it here in a second. So again, once the image is done uploading, here's how you can access the image URL. So go ahead and go back to the media library by clicking on library on the left-hand side of the screen. Then click on the image that you just uploaded, and that will bring you to the attachment details. Now the only thing that you need to be worried about right now is the image URL. This is what you're going to add to the HTML code within the code cheat sheet so that your unique image displays within the sidebar. And I know it sounds like a lot, but I'm going to show you how to do it step by step. But just know that you'll need to know how to access the image URLs in order for the HTML code to work in your sidebar. All right, so we've uploaded the first image, and now we need to upload the second image. So go ahead and click the Add New button at the top of the screen. And just follow the exact same steps as before to upload an image to the media library. There we go, and that's our signature image. And once again, let's review real quick how to access the image URL that you're gonna use within the HTML code for the code cheat sheet. So go ahead and click on that Signature image, and again, this will bring you to the attachment details. And on the right-hand side of the screen is where you'll find the image URL. Again, this is the URL that we're going to add to the code within the code cheat sheet in a few seconds. All right, now let's put this all into action. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get out of the media library and access my code cheat sheet. So let's X out of the media library And then to access the cheat sheet, simply click on the link below this video in the show notes that's marked code cheat sheet. This link will take you to a Google Doc that has the HTML you'll need for the About Me section. Now, I know the code cheat sheet might look like a lot at first, but trust me, it's not. All you need to do is you need to replace the red URLs on the cheat sheet with the two URLs of those images that we just uploaded to the media library. And again, I've highlighted these URLs in red. Those are gonna be the ones that you're gonna replace. Then you'll also wanna replace the green text with text of your own. And this is where you'll add your personal intro and sign off. So first things first, let's copy this code. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of it and I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna hit Command C to copy that code. Then the next thing I recommend doing is pasting it to a notepad or text editor. So I'm just using a simple text edit app that comes with the computer. But now that I've copied the code from the cheat sheet, I'm going to paste it to the text editor app. We're not going to paste it to the blog just yet because we still need to switch out the red URLs with the URLs of the images we just uploaded. There we go. So now that we have the code, let's go back to the blog's media library and copy those URLs of the images. Again, we're gonna use the image URLs in place of the red URLs within this code. So once you're back at the media library, click on the image to access the attachment details. Then simply select all of the URL by highlighting it and then copying it. Again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna hit Command C then all we're doing is we're gonna paste this image URL within the code on the cheat sheet. So I'm gonna go back to the code that I just pasted in the notepad, and I'm going to replace that first URL within the code with the URL of the image. 
Now one thing to keep in mind when pasting the code is to be sure that you add the new URL in between the quotations. You'll want to be very careful with adding the new URL because if you delete a quotation mark, the code won't work. Alright, now that we've added the first URL to the code, it's time to add the second URL of the signature image. So we'll go back to our media library and follow the exact same steps. So go ahead and click on the image. There we go, and go ahead and highlight that URL, and then copy it. Again, I'm hitting Command-C to copy it. And then I'll go back to that text editor app, and that second red URL at the bottom, you're going to want to go ahead and replace that URL with the new URL from the image. Perfect. Now, you'll also need to replace the green text with your personal intro and your sign-off, but you can do that within WordPress as well. So now that we have our code with the new image URLs, let's add it to the blog. So I'm going to highlight this code and copy it, and then I'm going to go back to the WordPress dashboard. So once we have copied this code, let's go back to the dashboard. So I'm going to X out of here. And in the upper left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over the blog's title and click Visit Site. Then click on the Customize link to open the Customization menu. And then click on the Widgets tab. And then the Sidebar Default Border tab. And then go ahead and open the custom HTML widget. And in the content section, that's where you're going to paste the HTML code from the cheat sheet. Perfect. And I'm going to scroll down a little so you can see the sidebar. And it looks great. Now keep in mind that you still need to edit the dummy text and switch it with your personal intro, which I've highlighted here to show you what needs to be changed. But once you've done that, Go ahead and click the Save and Publish button. And perfect, our changes are live. And let's exit out of here. So click the X to get out of the widget. And perfect, looks good. All right, moving on. Next, let's add social icons to help build your social following. So next, we want to add our social icons to the blog. Now, if we fast forward to the end of the video, you can see what the icons will look like once we set them up. As you can see, we're going to place the icons right below the About Me section of the sidebar. This particular widget displays the social icons in a clean and minimalist design, and it's super simple to set up. So, to add the social icons, we're going to click on the Customize link again. And then within the menu, click on the Widgets tab. Then click on the sidebar default border tab again. And we're going to add a widget, so click the add a widget button. And then click the simple social icons tab. Perfect. And this is where you can configure the widget so that it displays and links to specific social networks. So first things first, let's give this section a title. I'm going to call it Follow Me for obvious reasons. We want people to click on these icons and follow us. All right, next, you have the option to open the links in a new window. So whenever someone clicks on your social icon, it opens that link in a new tab. This is a personal preference, but I recommend doing it. So go ahead and check the box next to where it says Open Links in a New Window. There we go. Then below that, you have the ability to customize the size, radius, width, alignment, and color of the social icons. But before we do that, let's enter the URLs of the social media sites we want to link to. And as you can see, they have all the popular social media networks listed. And you'll want to put in the full URL of the site you want to link to within each field. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to use a hashtag for the URL so that the icon shows up. 
But again, you'll want to put the full URL of the site that you want to link to whenever you're filling this out. And as you're entering the URLs of the social networks, you'll notice that the default icons are showing up within the sidebar. Don't worry if you don't like the size and color, you can easily change that, and I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, so once you've entered all the social network URLs, scroll up to the top of the widget and start to customize the look and feel of the icons. So like I said, you can change things like the size, the color, and the alignment. And for this video, I'm going to align these icons so that they are centered. There we go. Then I'm just going to adjust the look by changing the icon color and the background color and, and also the hover color. And you'll basically just click the select color button next to the aspect of the widget that you want to change. And you can see, again, you can change the border color, the background color, and the hover color. I'm just going to give this a white background. We're going to have the icons remain black, and then we'll give it a hover color of a green color just so you can see it in action. And once you hover the mouse over the icon, as you can see, the color changes. Looks great. All right, so once you've added all your social networks and customized the look and feel of the icons, go ahead and click the Save and Publish button to push those changes live. And then let's exit out of here. So click the X and let's check it out real quick. There we go. Looks awesome. We now have a sleek and professional looking way to build our social media following. All right, moving on. Next, let's create a way to collect email addresses on your blog. This is commonly referred to as building your list, and it's probably the most effective way to build an audience and earn revenue with your blog. And we'll get into the details of earning money a little later, but for now, let's add an email opt-in form to the sidebar of your blog. So first thing you need to do is you need to sign up with an email marketing company. If you're on a budget, I recommend using MailChimp. They're free to get started, and they let you create a free opt-in form for your blog. Now, I'm not going to walk you through the entire process of signing up for a MailChimp account. It's very easy and, and pretty straightforward, but once you've set up your free account, this is how you'll add an opt-in form to your blog. And I'm going to go ahead and log in to my MailChimp account. There we go. Now, before we do anything, I want to show you one of my lists just so I can show you the effectiveness of having an email opt-in form on your blog. So as you can see, MailChimp is a very effective solution to building and growing your audience. If you present your audience with value and give them a way to submit their email address, the sky's the limit. And as you can see, MailChimp has helped me build a pretty substantial list with their email opt-in forms. All right, so the first thing that we, want to, that we want to do is we want to create a new list. Now, a list is simply the list of email addresses that sign up for a particular offer, lead magnet, or newsletter that you're giving away on your blog. And this lets you easily manage and keep track of your subscribers. So to create a new list, click on the List tab at the top of the screen. Then click on the Create List button. and click on the create list button again and then this is where we'll enter our list details so first we'll want to give our list a name and you'll want to make sure that you name it something that coincides with why people are signing up like newsletter or free ebook next you'll want to set up a default from email address and this is the email address that people will reply to so be sure it's not your personal email address Next, you'll enter a default from name, and this is who your emails will come from. Now, for the sake of time, I'm just entering a generic staff name, but you'll want to use something that people will instantly recognize, like your blog's name. Next, you'll want to remind people how they signed up to your list. So in this box, just write a short reminder of how they signed up. There we go. And once you've filled out the list of details, review everything to make sure that all the info is correct. And then scroll down to the bottom of the screen and click the Save button. And once saved, your list is ready to go. Perfect. Next, we want to create a sign-up form that will send emails to that list that we just created. So basically, anytime someone submits their email address through this form that we're about to create, that email will become part of the email list. Now to create a sign up form, you want to go back to your list if you aren't already that you just created and click on the sign up forms link. 
And since we're going to be generating HTML code to embed within our sidebar, you want to select the Embed Forms option. And this will bring us to the Embedded Forms. And as you can see, MailChimp offers some pretty standard yet effective opt-in forms. So as you can see, they have the classic form. That's what you're looking at right now. They have the super slim form, the horizontal, the naked, and the advanced. This is where you can add custom CSS and hidden fields, but for our blog, we're just going to use the classic form. By default, MailChimp's classic form includes the email address and first and last name fields. But what if we don't want that? Well, if you look on the left-hand side of the screen, there are some form options that give the ability to customize your form. This is a pretty powerful tool for a free service. So for this form, I'm only going to require people to submit their email address. So to change the form fields that are displayed, I'm going to select show only required fields so that all someone has to enter is their email address. Next, I want to get rid of this form title since I'll be adding my own title to the sidebar. So go ahead and uncheck the box next to include form title. That'll remove it. Finally, we want to add the HTML code to our blog. Now again, don't let the code intimidate you. All we're going to be doing is copy and pasting this HTML code within our sidebar, just like we did with our About Me widget. So simply click on the code and hit Command C on your keyboard to copy the code. Now we want to go back to the blog and add a custom HTML widget since we're going to be pasting the code from MailChimp. So once again, click on the customize link at the top of the screen. And then click on the widgets tab. And then click on the sidebar default bordered tab and click the Add Widget button. And once again, we'll select the custom HTML widget. And then that HTML code that we just copied, simply paste it into the content section of the widget. And then let's give this a unique title. I'm going to have it say Recipe Newsletter. There we go. And then that HTML code that we just copied looks great. If we scroll down, you can see that the code is now displaying the opt-in form that we just created in MailChimp. So anytime someone signs up using this opt-in form, they'll be added to your newsletter. Awesome. So let's go ahead and save this really quick. Click the Save and Publish button, exit out of here. And it looks great. We now have our About Me blurb our social icons, and our opt-in form all within the bordered sidebar. Perfect. And again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to build your email list. The first step in doing that is to have a way to collect email addresses. And this form gives you the ability to build and grow your subscribers for free. All right, moving on. So continuing with the sidebar, we're going to add a few more items within the sidebar, but they're not going to have the border around them. And if we fast forward real quick, you can see that I've added a few different widgets to the sidebar that stand alone and don't have a border around them. Now, you don't have to build your blog exactly like this, but I wanted to keep the design in line with the actual Kale demo for this tutorial. So first things first, let's go back to our blog and start customizing the non-bordered sidebar. So just like before, at the top of the screen, click on the Customize link to access the Customization menu. Then from there, click on the Widgets tab. And then this time, we're going to select the Sidebar Default tab, since we're going to be configuring the part of the sidebar that doesn't have the border. And you should see the default widgets that WordPress starts you out with. Now, there's nothing wrong with these widgets, but for this tutorial, we're not going to use all of them. So in order to get rid of these widgets, simply click on the arrows within the tabs. And once the widget opens, click on the remove link. It's pretty straightforward. And I'm just going to remove a couple of these widgets just to clean it up a little bit before we start customizing it. 
and I'll remove one more. There we go. And let's check this out real quick before we add some more widgets. And it looks pretty good so far. Next, we're going to add the recent posts with thumbnails widget. And the name of this widget is pretty self-explanatory, but this is going to allow us to display recent posts within the sidebar. So, to add the widget, just like before, click the Add Widget button. And then select the Recent Posts with Thumbnails tab towards the bottom there. And you'll notice that there are a lot of things that you can configure within this plugin, but for this tutorial, we're only going to focus on a few items. But when you have some more time, I recommend getting familiar with the settings. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a title that shows up within the sidebar. So we'll, let's call this So Sweet. You can name this anything, but again, you want it to be relevant to your blog. Next, I'm going to change the number of posts that display from five to two posts. Now you notice that the only post showing is the Hello World default post. Don't worry about that for now. We'll add our recent posts to the sidebar a little later on in the video. Next, I'm going to set the size of the thumbnail within the sidebar. So scroll down and where it says size of thumbnail, select Kale Thumbnail 760 by 400 pixels from that drop down menu. Now you can choose any size you want, but I prefer this size of thumbnail. And it should be the last selection. There we go. Perfect. And that's it for the settings. So go ahead and click the close link. And you know what, I forgot to remove the default recent post widgets. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that so that we don't have two recent post widgets within our sidebar. So go ahead and click the arrow on that tab if you didn't remove it and click the remove link. Then let's rearrange the layout of the widgets and this is super cool. All you have to do is drag and drop the widget in the order you want it to appear within the sidebar. So I want to have the recent posts with thumbnails widget to appear right after my search bar. So just click on the tab and drag it and you can see that the so sweet title is now directly below the search bar. All right, next let's adjust the categories widget. And this gives your readers a quick and easy way to filter through your blog posts by category. It's a great user experience and is just another way to let your audience easily browse your content. Now, the default setting lists your categories out, but if you have a lot of categories, this could get crowded and make your sidebar look bad. So let's change that. And this, again, is super simple. So in the customization menu, just click on the Categories tab and select the first box that says Display as Dropdown. And voila, the categories are now consolidated to a drop-down menu. Looks good. And we'll add more categories to this later, but for now the user experience is a lot better. Alright, let's go ahead and save this, so click the Save and Publish button. There we go. Next, let's implement your first revenue stream so that you could start earning money with your blog. Now, I'm not going to lie, this is my favorite part of the tutorial. And the way that we're going to start earning revenue with the blog is through affiliate marketing. And if we fast forward real quick, you can see what we're going to be making. What you're looking at right now is display advertising using affiliate campaigns. This is one of the most profitable marketing strategies and this theme sidebar offers some premier advertising space within your blog. Now I should mention that I'm going to be showing you how to implement affiliate marketing campaigns and anytime you have affiliate offers on your blog, you need to disclose to your audience that they're clicking on an affiliate link. So in addition to your affiliate offer within your sidebar, I'm going to show you how to add an affiliate disclaimer as well. This will not only protect you legally, but it allows you to be transparent with your audience, which is always a good thing. This ultimately leads to more conversions because you're building that trust with your audience by being honest. 
Now, before we get started, I want to give you a quick rundown on how affiliate marketing works. At its core, affiliate marketing is a monetization strategy that lets you market other companies' products for a cut of the profits. There are a lot of ways to get started, but let me show you a quick way to start earning money with your food blog through affiliate marketing. So step one is you should sign up for a reputable affiliate program like Eat, Drink, Paleo. Now, as a food blogger, you'll want to make sure that you join an affiliate program that makes products that align with your audience's interests. And as you can see, Eat Drink Paleo has a wide range of affiliate offers that would be very attractive to people visiting a food blog. Step two is you'll promote those affiliate offers on your blog through display advertising, affiliate links, and email campaigns. And once again, as you can see, Eat Drink Paleo provides their affiliates with some great resources to help increase your conversion, and this ultimately leads to commissions, which leads us to the final step, getting paid, step number three. So anytime someone clicks on your affiliate link and makes a purchase, you get paid. And the Thrive Markets affiliate program gives you the opportunity to make some serious income by referring memberships to their site. You can make over $10,000 if you just refer 500 members. Now that's some serious passive income and it's just from one affiliate offer. Plus, if you set your blog up like I show you how in this video, you can easily implement multiple affiliate campaigns and increase your potential to earn more revenue with your blog. Like I said, affiliate marketing is a very lucrative strategy when it's done right. And the food blogging industry offers some of the most reliable and highly converting affiliate programs around. Now we just touched on Eat Drink Paleo and the Thrive Market, but another great affiliate program for food bloggers is BokuSuperfood.com. This boutique company specializes in high quality, certified organic, vegan, and kosher superfood products, and they also have a great affiliate program that pays, I think, a 15% commission on every sale. Now that means you get 15% of the profit for every sale you refer. It's not bad. All right, so now that you're somewhat familiar with affiliate marketing, I'm going to show you how to use your sidebar as an affiliate marketing tool. So for this tutorial, you're going to learn how to add an affiliate link to an image within the sidebar. This is a highly effective way to promote affiliate offers on your blog, and it's super easy to do. So basically, all we're doing is we're just adding an image that's linked to an affiliate offer. Now, Eat Drink Paleo has a great affiliate program where they provide the images to their affiliates to use with your affiliate link. So once you're an affiliate for their company, you'll simply download the image and use that affiliate link that they provide within the sidebar image widget on your blog. I know it sounds like a lot, but this is how you do it. It's actually pretty simple. So head back to your blog and open the customize menu if you haven't done so already. And then we're going to be adding a new widget. So click the add a widget button and then select the image widget. And for this section, we're going to leave the title blank and then we're going to add an image. So go ahead and click the add image button and then select an image that you want to use for your campaign. Now I've already uploaded an image from Eat Drink Paleo, but this is where you'd upload your image that you want to use within the sidebar for your affiliate campaign. So I'm going to go ahead and select this image. So you want to click on that image to select it and then click the add to widget button at the bottom of the screen. And this will add it to the widget. There we go. Now once it's in the widget, click the edit button so that we can start to configure the image and link it to the affiliate link. So click the edit image button. Perfect. And this will bring you to the image details. This is where you can configure the image to your liking, but for this tutorial, we're only going to focus on the size and the link. So under the display settings where it says size, open that drop down menu and make sure that you're using the full size image. Then under link to, select the custom URL from that drop down menu. And then paste the affiliate link from the Eat Drink Paleo affiliate offer right below that. This assures that when someone clicks on the image, they'll be directed to your affiliate offer. Then if they make a purchase, you get paid. Pretty simple. Finally, check the box right there that says open link in a new tab. 
This is a personal preference, but I think it's a much better user experience if the reader isn't taken completely away from your blog whenever they click on your affiliate offer. All right, so go ahead and click the update button. Perfect. We now have our first affiliate offer. Next, let's add an affiliate disclaimer right below that. So I'm gonna close this widget real quick. Click the close link. And then if we fast forward to the end of the video, you can see that I've created an affiliate disclaimer below the affiliate offer. This assures that you are following FTC guidelines and it protects you legally. It's pretty important. So back at the blog, we're simply going to add a text widget. So go ahead and click on the add widget button, then select the text widget And I'm gonna title this Affiliate Disclaimer. Then I'm gonna be adding dummy text within the content section, but this is where you'd enter your affiliate disclaimer, notifying your readers that there are affiliate links on your blog and that you'll earn a commission if they make a purchase through those links. It's not only a best practice to be transparent with your audience, but it's the law. All right, so once you're done, click the Save and Publish button at the top of the screen. That's gonna push those changes live. And then we'll exit out of here, so click that X. And let's check out our sidebar real quick. Awesome, it's looking good so far. You have now set up your first revenue stream. Sidebar looks pretty good, but I wanna move a few things around. So real quick, I'm just gonna move the categories drop down below the affiliate disclaimer. And remember, it's pretty easy to do, it's just a drag and drop scenario. So you wanna go back to that uh, customization menu and open up the sidebar default tab so you can access the widgets and again it's just a drag and drop scenario so you'll click on that widget drag it all the way to the bottom and as you can see boom awesome it has moved that that widget to the very bottom so click the save and publish button I'm gonna X out of here let's test it out looks great also, let's test the affiliate campaign. So if we click on the image, it should take us to the affiliate offer. Awesome, love it. We now have a functional revenue stream open and ready for traffic. All right, moving on. Next, let's configure the header on the home page so that it displays some unique images that link to a landing page that has an opt-in form. And if we fast forward to the end of the video, you can see that we have a unique header image that when clicked on, links to a landing page that has our MailChimp opt-in form. And again, this is just another great way to direct traffic to your opt-in form and grow your email list. And the Kale theme lets you easily implement this growth strategy. So let's add this to our blog. And just like before, when we wanna make a change, we'll go to the Customize menu. So click on the Customize link at the top of the screen. And then click on the header image tab. And this will open up the header image settings and it's where we'll configure the images and the links to the opt-in form. Now you'll notice that the default settings start you out with a set image. And for this tutorial, we're gonna add two new unique images. And I might add that when you add your new header images, make sure that they are 1200 by 500 pixels. So to add the new image, click the Add New Image button. And just like before, you're gonna to wanna to upload a new image. So follow the same steps like we did before. So click the Upload Files button, and then the Select Files button. And go ahead and find the image you wanna use for the header image. There we go, and then click the Select and Crop button. And once again, we're gonna skip the cropping because we're gonna keep the full image. Nice, and there we go. And our new image is now being used as the home page header image, perfect. Now let's add another image. So simply follow the same steps as before to add an additional image. So in the Customize menu, go ahead and click the Add New Image button. And we'll just upload the new file. There we 
we go. Save and crop, and then I'm going to skip the cropping. All right, now that we have our two images, go ahead and click the Randomize Uploaded Headers button. This ensures that every time someone visits your blog, one of the two header images will randomly be shown on the home page. This is just another way to create a unique user experience. There we go. Next, let's update the caption heading in the description. So I'm going to leave the caption heading as is. And then for the caption description, I'm going to say click here for free recipes. And again, this is just going to link to our landing page, which we still need to make. So we'll leave the caption URL blank. But once we create the landing page, which we're about to do, we'll come back and add it to the caption URL. So once again, I'm going to leave the caption heading as is. I'm going to update the description, and then we're going to add the URL in just a second. So let's push this live. So click the Save and Publish button, and then X out of this to exit the customization menu. There we go. Next, let's create our landing page with the opt-in form. So if we fast forward real quick, I'm going to show you how the landing page will look and function. So the idea behind this is that whenever someone clicks on your call to action, they'll be taken to a separate page that has the opt-in form that we created in MailChimp. The process for setting this up is going to be somewhat similar to the sidebar process, but the only difference is that we'll be creating a page instead of using a widget. So the first thing we need to do is create the page. So back at your, at your blog, the top of the screen, hover your mouse over the plus new link and click on page. And once again, this will bring you to your WYSIWYG editor. And just like before, when we created the pages for the primary nav, it's the exact same process. We're going to give the page a title and add some content. So since this is going to have our newsletter opted form, I'm going to call it recipe newsletter. Then I'm going to add some content. And I'm just going to use dummy text for the sake of time, but this is where you could create an intro to your newsletter and entice people to sign up, maybe even add some Im images and whatnot. So I'm just going to paste it within the text editor. There you go, super simple, almost like adding text to a Word doc or an email. Next, we'll add the opt-in form code from MailChimp. And again, this is the exact same code that we used for the sidebar. Now, I should mention that you'll want to make sure that you have the text tab selected when you're pasting this code. This, is allow this allows you to write your posts in HTML. And since we're pasting the HTML code from the opt-in form, you'll want to make sure that you have the text tab open. And a word of caution, switching between the visual and text view can cause some of your HTML entries to be lost. And this is due in part to the manner in which WordPress handles your HTML. So after we add the HTML, don't click the visual tab. I suggest that you remain in the text editor. So I'm just going to copy the code again and paste it within the WYSIWYG editor and WordPress. So let's go back to MailChimp and copy that code within our list that we used for our embedded form for the sidebar. Then back at the blog, just simply paste that HTML within the text editor. There we go. And now that we have our page ready to go, let's go ahead and preview it. So click on the preview button. Beautiful, looks great. We have a recipe newsletter content and a new opt-in form. But what about the sidebar? What if we wanted to have a full width page without the sidebar? Well, it's super simple to configure. So go back to your editor and on the right hand side of the screen under page attributes, just click on that drop down menu under template and then select full width. And this changes the default layout, which displays the sidebar, to a full width layout that removes the sidebar and only shows the content. There we go. So let's go ahead and preview this again. So click on the preview button. And there we go, looks great. We've changed the entire layout and now we have a full width version of the page. I like this layout for the landing page because it doesn't distract the reader or give them other options for leaving the page. It keeps their focus and increases your chance for a conversion. All right, so let's publish this page and make it live. So go back to the editor and simply click the publish button.
There we go. And the page is live. So now that it's live, we'll want to add the URL of this page to our header on the home page. So after you publish the page, let's view it to double check that everything is good to go. So click on the view page. There we go, everything looks fine. All right, next, you'll wanna copy the URL because we're gonna add that to the header. So go ahead and highlight the full URL and copy it. Then to update the header, you'll wanna access the customization menu again. So click the customize link at the top of the screen. Then click the header image tab. Then at the bottom where it says caption URL, paste the URL of the page that we just created. So go ahead and paste the URL of the landing page. Perfect. Then let's save and publish our changes. So click the save and publish button and then let's exit out of here. So click the X. And let's go ahead and test this out. So back at the home page, if we click on the text within our header, it should take us to our landing page with the opt-in form. Boom, perfect. You now have a very powerful growth strategy implemented, and this is a great way to create a massive email list. Congrats. All right, moving on. Let's start adding content to our pages. All right, so the first page we're gonna configure is the About page. And if we click on the page within the primary nav, you can get an idea of how the default page is set up. But we're gonna change it to a full width layout like the landing page we just created. Let me show you what I mean. So currently it's a two column layout, but if we fast forward to the end of this video, you can see that our about page displays a nice large welcome image and has some content below it. Super simple, clean, full width layout, straight to the point. All right, so let's configure our about page. And first, you'll need to be on the page that you wanna edit, so make sure that you're on the about page. Then at the top of the screen, click the edit page link, and this will bring you to the back end of the page where you'll make all of your edits. Again, the setup is exactly like the landing page, so you should be somewhat familiar with how it works. But one difference is that for this page, I'm gonna use the visual tab. And remember, it's not recommended that you switch back and forth between text and visual editors, but for this tutorial, I wanna show you how both editors work. So go ahead and click the visual tab. And the first thing I'm gonna to add to this page is an image. There we go, and the first thing I'm gonna to add to this page is an image. So to do that, click the Add Media button. And this will bring you to your media library and simply follow the same steps as before when we previously added images to the blog. So click the Upload Files link and then the Select Files button. And then once you find the image that you want to use, there we go. There's one thing you should look at before you add it to the page. If you notice on the right hand side of the screen, there are the attachment display settings. This is a pretty robust feature that allows you to configure the image and change the way it's displayed on your blog. Now zoom into it super extreme close-up now for some reason it has my image set to be a medium size but I'm gonna change that to full size so simply click the field and select full size from that drop-down menu there we go perfect and then before you insert it into the page, make sure that you have that image selected. You could tell by the blue box and check mark on the page. There we go. And then click the blue insert into page button. And it's loading. Perfect, looks great. We have our About Me image ready to go. Next, let's add some content below it. So first, I wanna add a heading. And this will be a different sized and formatted font that stands apart from the rest of the text. Having different headings within your content is good for SEO, content structure, and readability. Headings help people skim through your content and quickly find what they want. All right, so let's add a heading after the image and let's call it My Story. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and type my story. And then to change the size of the text and turn it into a heading, simply highlight it and then click on the arrow next to paragraph to get the drop down menu. And this lets you select the different sizes of headings. We have heading one through six, one being the biggest. And for SEO purposes, I highly recommend that you select anything below heading one. So I'm just gonna select H2 from the drop down. There you go, I'm gonna select heading two. And as you can see, the text has changed size. Perfect. Next, I'm going to add some content below the heading. And just for the sake of time, I'm going to add some dummy text. But this is where you'll want to introduce yourself to your audience. Perfect. Now that we have our About page content, let's preview it and make sure it's ready to be published. So go ahead and click the Preview Changes button. Awesome, looks pretty cool. But once again, what if we wanted to remove the sidebar and make it full width? Well, just like before, we previously did with the landing page, we'll go back to the editor and change the template. So under page attributes where it says template, click on that drop down and select full width. And let's preview the changes. So click the preview button. And there we go. Voila. Looks much better in my opinion. We now have a full width layout that makes a lasting first impression. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to use the full width layout for your blog's about page, but I just like the fact that there isn't anything else in the page that pulls the reader's attention away from the content. This is just a great way to introduce yourself and start the relationship with your readers. All right, moving on. Next, let's add a contact form to the blog. All right, so if we visit the contact page, like we're doing right now, you'll see that we have a two column layout, but we're gonna be adding a contact form within the content on the left-hand side of the screen. And having a contact form is a great way to keep a line of communication open between you and your audience, and it's also a great way to build your email list. So let's add a contact form to the blog. So to do so, we're gonna go back to the dashboard so on the upper left hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over the blog name and click dashboard. And we're going to be using the contact form seven plugin. So to access the plugin settings, click on the plugins link. On the right hand side of the screen, or excuse me, on the left hand side of the screen. There we go. And this will bring you to the plugins management page. Then to access the contact form settings, click on the settings link underneath the name of the plugin. And this will bring you to the contact form admin page. And just like the other plugins, this is where you can configure the different aspects of the plugin. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on the advanced features, but for this tutorial, we're just going to use the default contact form that comes with this plugin. Now, there should be a preloaded contact form named contact form one. Now, the great thing about this plugin is that it comes with the short code of the HTML so that all you have to do is just copy and paste the short code to your blog and you'll have a fully functional contact form that allows your visitors to send you messages. So let's go ahead and copy this short code. So just select it all and copy it. There we go. And then go back to our home page. So let's visit the site and then click on the contact tab and that's going to open up the page and as you can see it's blank and we want to edit it so click the edit page link at the top of the screen and then just like our previous pages we're going to paste that short code within the content section of the visual editor and again you're going to make sure you're in the text tab because we're pasting code not just text so click that text tab and then paste that short code within the content section. And then right above it, I'm gonna add some text. And again, you can add a nice little intro. I'm just adding some dummy text. There we go, and let's preview this. So click the preview changes button. Perfect. 
and you'll see that the short code is now pushing out the full contact form and it looks great. We have a clean and elegantly designed form that's ready to use. Perfect. So let's go ahead and update these changes and push them live. So click that blue update button. There we go, and let's take a look at it. So click the view page link. Boom, looks great. Got our contact form ready to go. All right, next, let's publish your very first blog post. So now that we've configured and customized the blog, we can start adding actual post content. And as you can see, WordPress starts you off with a default blog post titled Hello World. Now the Kale theme uses this post throughout the entire feed, but that's just so that you get a visual of how the theme is supposed to look and behave. And we'll be getting rid of the Hello World default posts in a few minutes, but first let's add an actual blog post. And this is where you start publishing your own original content. And this is when you officially become a blogger. It's very exciting. So let's add your very first blog post. Now there are a couple different ways to add a new post and I'm going to show you both ways. But they each do the same thing. It really comes down to what you're most comfortable with. So the first way to add a new post is if you hover your mouse over new at the top of the screen and click on post. That'll open up the post editor. Or on the left-hand side of the screen, if you hover your mouse over post and click add new, that'll do the exact same thing and bring you to the editor. All right, so once again, what you're looking at right now is the visual editor, and I know that we covered this whenever we added our pages to the blog, but it never hurts to review. So this is the visual and text editor, commonly referred to as the WYSIWYG editor, which stands for what you see is what you get. And the thinking behind this title is that whenever you add content to the visual editor, that's what you're gonna see on the blog. And we'll get into the spe specifics of that a little later on, but just know that whenever I say WYSIWYG, I'm referring to this visual editor. Now. If you've been following along, which I hope you have since you're already watching this video, concept is pretty much the same. You're gonna have a title section. That's where you'll enter the title. Below that is a content section where you'll enter the content and you have the Yoast SEO plugin. And then to the right, we have our publishing options, categories, tags, and a featured image section where we'll add the featured image for our blog. Now the concept is pretty much the same as building a page. We'll use the WYSIWYG visual editor to add, upload, and publish content to our blog. I'll talk you through each step as we go, but again, it's basically the same process as creating a page. So now that you know your way around the visual editor, let's create a post. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna give our post a title, and this is gonna be your blog post's headline, a crafting and attention-grabbing headline I can be challenging at times, but try to keep it under 70 characters and always implement keywords within each title. All right, so now that we have our headline, there are a couple things I wanna point out before we start adding content. First, if you look right below the title, you'll see that the permalink has been automatically generated for you. And it's using keywords within the blog post title for that URL. If you can't see the permalink, odds are you're in the text editor. Switch to the visual editor and you'll see the permalink. Perfect. Now if you look below the post, the Yoast SEO plugin has begun to create our snippet that will show that'll show up in the search engines. Next, we want to add some content. So directly below the title is the visual editor, and this is where we'll enter our blog's content. Now I should point out that this editor has the ability to switch from visual to text editor. And basically what this means is that the visual editor is like a Word doc. You can copy and paste images and text and it will act like you're using Microsoft Word. But the text tab will bring you to the text editor. And this will show the HTML of your content, which we'll cover a little later on in the video. But this feature comes in handy if you're familiar with HTML. But even if you're new to HTML, it's a good way to get your feet wet with the code and learn how your blog posts are structured. All right, so let's start adding some content. Now, for the sake of time, I'm gonna be using dummy text, once again, for the content within this post, but this is where you'll actually type the text for your blog post. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that if you click on the toolbar toggle icon,
you'll open a handful of additional editing tools. And this is just another cool feature that can help you craft a unique blog post. But again, for this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and paste a few paragraphs of dummy text within the visual editor. There we go. And next we wanna create a category to add this blog post to. Now a category is a group of related blog posts that are about similar subjects. Whenever you create a category, it makes it easier for people to find your content. Plus in a few minutes, I'm gonna show you a cool menu feature for categories as well. So to create a category on the right hand side of your screen where it says categories, go ahead and click on the add new category link there we go. And then directly below that, we'll type in the name of the category we want to add this blog post to. So let's say this post is a recipe. In this case, we'll name this category recipes and then click the add new category button. And now we have our first category. Next, let's add some tags. Tags are a bit similar to categories, but there isn't a hierarchy and they can't be used within a menu structure. But they're good for grouping content and helping your visitors find specific types of content throughout your blog. And I'll show you what I mean in a few seconds. So first, let's add some tags to this blog post. And think of tags as being keywords that relate to the content of the specific blog post. So to add a tag, go to the tag section and enter in some keywords that are related to the content and be sure to separate them with content, excuse me, with commas. And once you have your tags, go ahead and click the add button. Perfect. There we go, got our tags. Next, let's add our featured image. And all a featured image is, is it's the image that visually represents your post on the blog. It's like a little blog advertisement. So to add a featured image, click on the set featured image link on the right hand side of the screen. There we go. And again, this is the same process as adding an image. Simply select your image that you're going to use. Let's go with the salad. <laughs> there we go. Now before we add it to the blog post, I'm going to show you a cool feature. On the right hand side of the screen, you should see a few different fields under the attachment details. And this is where you can add things like a title, caption, description, and alternate text. Now I won't get too far into the weeds, but Adding a title and alternate text is good for user experience and SEO. The title is shown whenever someone hovers their mouse over the image and the alt text is used to help the search engines know what's in the picture since they can't see images. So you'll want to add alt text that describes the image. So I'm just going to give this a title, something descriptive, and again this is Whenever someone hovers their mouse over the title, this is what they'll see. There we go. And then the alt text. We'll go ahead and describe what's in the image. There we go. Now that our image is all set, click the set featured image button. Boom, and our featured image is set and ready to go. Next, let's craft our search engine snippet with the Yoast SEO plugin. And again, this snippet is what will be shown in the search engine's search results. And one of the main reasons I love the Yoast SEO plugin is because it gives you the ability to strategically construct page titles and meta description tags within the WordPress editor. This also helps you craft an aesthetically pleasing and eye-catching listing within Google's organic search results. And by using this plugin, you can optimize the content of your titles and snippets to maximize your click-through rate. Long story short, it's, it's good for SEO. <laughs> All right, so to edit the snippet, simply click the Edit Snippet button, and this will present you with some additional editing options. We're gonna leave the SEO title and slug as is, and only worry about the meta description, which is the preview text that people see when they search for your blog post on a search engine. It's also used within the HTML of your post, but we won't get into that for now. So within the meta description box, start by typing a preview of the post. And you'll want to be sure to use keywords and make it enticing to help improve your click-through rate. Now, you'll probably notice the orange line moving below your text as you type. 
This feature helps you stay within the character limit set forth by Google, and it lets you know whenever you should stop adding content to the snippet whenever it turns green. And there we go. Now once we have our snippet, click the Close Snippet Editor button. And next, let's add a focus keyword. And this tells Yoast the keyword that you're trying to rank for and lets the plugin analyze the content, determine whether or not you're using the focus keyword in a way that benefits your SEO. Plus, after adding the keyword, you'll be given an SEO grade that helps you optimize your content for the search engines. And we'll just simply type in our, our keyword there where it says focus keyword. All right. So we have our blog post content, we've set the category tags, featured image, and we've created our search engine snippet preview. But before we publish, let's preview the post. So go ahead and click on the preview button. And it looks great. Our content is displayed beautifully in the two column layout. Looks super professional. Also, if you notice below the post, we have our hyperlinked author, category, and tags. Again, the category and tags allow you to group together related blog posts that have similar content, which allows your visitors to find what they're looking for a lot quicker. Plus, it creates a better user experience overall. All right, so this looks great. So let's go ahead and publish it. So we'll go back to the editor and click the publish button. Perfect. All right, so let's check this out. So we'll visit the site. So hover your mouse over the blog title and click visit site. And then if we scroll down, you can see that our very first blog post is listed within the recent post section of the home page. Now you're probably wondering why there's a bunch of white space below your recent posts, and you're probably wondering why it's surrounded by a bunch of default Hello World posts. But don't freak out, this can all be changed. I'm gonna show you how to do it in a few seconds. But before we do, I'm gonna add some more posts so that we have some content to actually display on the homepage. All right, so I'm gonna add a few more blog posts and I'm gonna go step by step, but for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go into as much detail as I did for the very first blog post. So again, to add a post, hover your mouse over plus new and then click post. And then we'll give this one a title. Let's call this yum yum. And then in the content section, I'm just gonna paste that dummy text and then next, we'll create our category. So I'm gonna call this one Healthy Living and click the Add New Category button. Then I'm gonna add one more category. We'll, we'll combine the categories. You can have more than one category. So the Healthy, healthy Living will be our primary category. And let's add our featured image. There we go. And let's set that featured image. Perfect. Let's preview this. And looks good. So I'm going to publish it. All right, and let's add another post. Hover your mouse over plus new and click post. Now you'll probably notice that I'm not adding tags. I'm also not configuring the the uh, the Google snippet in the Yoast SEO plugin. Um, you know, again, just for the sake of time, I'm just going through this pretty quickly, but those are definitely things that you'll wanna add whenever you're creating your blog posts. Right, so. Set the featured image for this one. There we go, and we'll publish it. Perfect. All right, now let's go to our home page. 
and you'll probably notice that I've added about 10 posts so that you can get a good visual on how they'll be displayed on the home page. And if we scroll down to the recent post section, you can see how nice and clean the blog feed looks once you've published a few blog posts. Looks awesome. Next, let's configure the home page so that it's not displaying the default Hello World blog posts all over the page. So the first thing we want to do is we want to edit the featured post section. And the Kale theme conveniently displays three blog posts of your choosing right below the hero image on the home page. This is a great way to generate traffic to specific posts, or you can feature your most popular posts. Either way, it's a cool feature. Okay. So to adjust the featured post section, you'll want to visit the customization menu. And I'm sure you're pretty familiar with that. So to access that menu, you're just going to click on that customize link at the top of the screen. And this will bring you to the customize menu. Then select the front page tab. And then select the Featured Post tab since we'll be editing the featured posts on the home page. All right, now this Featured Post widget gives you the flexibility to customize a few things. First, you can change the heading. So since we're creating a food blog, we'll adjust the messaging to something that speaks to food bloggers. So I'm going to change the Featured Post to New Treats. Next, let's switch out the three posts and change them to something more specific than the default Hello World posts. So it's pretty simple. Each post has its own drop-down menu where you can select from posts that you've already published. There we go, and once you've decided on the three posts that will serve as your featured posts on the home page, go ahead and click the Save and Publish button at the top of the screen. Perfect. Now instead of Xing out of this menu and leaving, we're going to make a few more adjustments. So click the arrow to go to the previous menu. And then if we scroll down to the very bottom of the page, you'll see the section of the home page that we're going to edit next. So towards the bottom of the page, the Kale theme has a section that lets you display a full-sized blog post with a unique title. It's almost like it's its own section. This is really cool because you can theoretically create posts in a specific category and have them only show up in this part of the page. So to change this post, click on the large highlight post tab in the customization menu. And that will open the settings and give you the ability to adjust the content within this section of the page. So the first thing I'm going to change is the title. And as you can see, whenever you change the title, you can change it to anything. But I suggest making it unique yet relevant to the type of post that you're posting here. So instead of my diary, let's call this food for thought. Make it relevant to a food blog. There we go. Next, clip the drop-down menu to select the post you want to display. And this is exactly like the featured post drop-down. So simply select from the list of published posts. And there we go. As you can see, we now have a unique and specific post that is highlighted at the bottom of our homepage. Looks great. So let's make these changes live. So we'll click on the Save and Publish button. And then we'll exit out of here. So click that X. Perfect. Moving on to the next step. Let's customize our recent post widget that's in our sidebar. So next, we're going to customize that widget that we installed not too long ago. So earlier in the video, we installed the recent posts with thumbnails widget, and this gave us the ability to display specific posts within our sidebar. This is a very powerful feature. So let's configure the widget so that it shows the exact posts that we want to display within our sidebar. So first thing we want to do is click the customize link. and then click the widgets tab and then select the sidebar default tab and then click on the recent post with thumbnails tab to access the widget settings 
and I'm going to scroll down so that you can see the posts within the sidebar while I'm making the edits. So real click, let's change the title again just for fun. So in the title field, I'm going to call this Sweet Treats. There we go. Looks good. Next, I'm going to select the specific category of blog posts that I want to display. And this widget gives you the ability to show specific posts by categories. So simply select the category from the list in the drop down. And you should see the list of categories there. So I'm going to select recipes. There we go. Next, let's adjust the size of the thumbnail. So a cool feature of this widget is that it gives you the ability to change the size of the blog's featured image within the sidebar. So where it says size of thumbnail, click that drop down menu and select the size you want to use. And you can pick and choose and the widget will show you what it will look like in real time. It's pretty cool. Now there are a handful of other features you can play around with, but I like how it looks. So I'm just going to go ahead and publish these changes once I've select selected the uh, the size of the thumbnail. That's the one that I like personally, the kale thumbnail. Perfect. So again, I'm going to leave everything as is, but if you have a little more time, you know, play around with it. But I'm going to go ahead and save and publish these and push these changes live. And we'll X out of here to check it out. And then if we scroll down, Then our sidebar, you can see that our recent post section and the sidebar looks great. The blogs, it's really coming along. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, we still have that Hello World post still hanging around, so let's get rid of that. So to get rid of this post, you'll go back to your dashboard. So hover your mouse over your blog's title and click on Dashboard. Then click on Posts on the left-hand side of the screen, and this will bring you to your Posts Management section. Here you'll be able to access and edit all the posts that you've created so far. Now we want to delete the Hello World post, so to get rid of it, simply click on the Trash link underneath the Hello World post. And it's gone. Perfect. And then if we revisit the home page, so let's visit the site. And if we scroll down, you can see that that post has been removed from our recent post section and is unviewable to the public. Awesome. All right, let's keep going on. Next, let's create our recipes page. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the cornerstone of this entire food blog. We're going to create the recipes page. And if we fast forward to the end of the video, you can see what the page will look like. So for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a recipe page that is dedicated to showing nothing but posts that contain recipes. And this is a convenient way to showcase your recipes while also helping your audience find what they're looking for a lot quicker. This type of user experience will keep people coming back to your blog when they're in need of some great recipes. Plus, it just looks cool. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to adjust the primary nav because when we first built the menu, we created a recipes page. But I did that just for aesthetics so that you could get a visual of what it'll look like. And that's because we're going to use categories instead of an actual page for this menu. And I'll show you what I mean in a few seconds. But first, we need to adjust the primary nav menu. So on the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over your blog's title and click on Menus. And this will bring you to your menu management page. So what we're going to be doing is configuring the menu structure so that the recipe page will display all the posts that are within the recipe category. And if you remember, whenever we were creating blog posts, you had the ability to assign each post to a specific category. And this is how we're going to assure that the recipe page shows nothing but blog posts that have recipes in them. So long story short, we're going to configure our menu so that it shows a page that displays nothing but blog posts that are within the recipe category. And if you haven't created a recipe category, I recommend you do that before moving on. So the first thing we want to do is remove the current recipe tab from the menu structure. 
So go ahead and click on the arrow within the recipe tab and then click the remove link to remove it. And now this is only removing the page from the menu structure. If you actually created a recipe page like I did earlier on in the video, you'll want to make sure to delete that page from the pages section of the dashboard as well. Now that the initial recipe page has been removed from the menu, let's add the new category page. So on the left hand side of the screen where it says categories, go ahead and click on the arrow within the tab. And this will list all the categories that you've created so far. And then all we're doing is we're checking the box next to the category that we want to use within our primary nav. Now if you don't see the recipe category, that means you haven't created it yet or you need to click on the view all in order to see it. Alright, so now that we've selected the recipe category, click the add to menu button to add it to our nav menu. And by default, WordPress places it at the bottom of the list. This means that it will be all the way to the right of the menu on our home page. But I want to move it to the middle. So simply drag and drop the tab to where you want it to display on the primary nav. So basically just click it, drag and drop. There we go. Perfect. Then to make these changes official, click the Save Menu button. And then you should get a splash, a splash notification at the top of the screen stating that the new primary menu has been updated. Perfect. And let's check this out and visit the site. And let's click on our new and improved recipe tab. And voila, we now have a new tab on our primary nav that takes visitors to a page that's dedicated solely to displaying blog posts that have been categorized as recipes. So all your blog posts that include recipes will show up on this page. And I also love the full width grid layout, looks awesome. All right, since we're here, the next thing we're gonna configure is the blog tab. And really quickly, let me show you what I mean. So if we fast forward to the end of the blog real quick, you can see what I'm talking about. So what we're trying to accomplish is we want to add multiple categories to the blog tab. So if you hover your mouse over the blog, all your categories will show up below that. All right, this is just another cool feature of WordPress that helps you create a good user experience while also making your site easy to navigate. And I should also mention that a well-structured site is good for SEO as well. Now, if you only have a couple of categories so far, you'll want to add a few more categories before moving on. You can easily add categories by editing a blog post and adding the categories through the back end of the editor like we did whenever we were creating a blog post. All right, so let's add some categories to the blog tab. So just like before, you'll want to access the menu setting page. So hover your mouse over the blog title and click on menus. And we're going to be adding the categories to our menu structure. So click on the Categories tab to access the list of categories. And then simply check the box next to the categories that you want to add. And again, these are going to be the ones that are going to show up under the Blog tab. And then click the Add to Menu button once you've selected all the categories. Now over in the menu structure, what you're going to do is you're going to drag and drop the newly added category tags directly below the blog tab. And one thing to pay attention to is how you place the category tabs underneath the blog tab. You'll want to make sure that whenever you slide that category tab that it's positioned slightly to the right, almost like an indentation. This tells WordPress that these are sub-menu items and that they should be displayed as a drop-down menu. Super cool feature, super easy to do, love it. So there we go, we have our blog tab with those sub-menu items. All right, so let's save this menu and check it out. And I accidentally added the recipes tab, but moving on. So let's click the save menu button and check this out. So we visit the site. And if we hover our mouse over the blog tab, perfect. We have that drop down menu that has all of our categories. Looks great. Again, this is just another uh, way to have a great user experience and it helps your visitors quickly find what they're looking for on your blog. 
All right, moving on. Next, let's configure the recipe plugin so that you can add a visually appealing recipe to your blog post. So one of the main features of most successful food blogs is that they contain recipes. Now you can easily just write down a recipe and post it to your blog, but we want to make the recipe visually appealing and shareable across social networks like Pinterest. And if we fast forward to the end of the video real, real quick, you can see what the plugin can do for your blog posts that contain recipes. So the presentation of each recipe is not only aesthetically pleasing, but it gives detailed visual step-by-step -step instructions with high-def images and icons. And having your recipes look like this online will increase the likelihood that people will not only use your recipes, but share them as well. All right, so let's configure the plugin and start adding recipes to your blog posts. So I'm gonna select a blog post that I've already categorized as a recipe. So I'm gonna click on that cheeseburger in paradise. And as you can see, it's already filled with content, but it's missing the recipe. So to fix that, let's edit this post. So click on the edit post link. And once again, we're in the back end of the post where, where we will make our edits. Now, one of the reasons that I love this plugin is that it makes adding recipes easy as a click of the mouse, literally. They've added an icon within the WYSIWYG editor where all you have to do is click it and it adds the recipe to the content. Super cool. So let me show you how that works. So go ahead and click on the fork and knife icon and this will bring up the recipe details. Now before we get started, I should mention that if you have a recipe ready to go, you can simply click the import from text tab and this gives you the ability to just paste the content directly through the plugin but we wanna use the plugin to our advantage. So make sure that you're on the recipe details tab when adding a new recipe. All right, so this is where we can add the initial info for the recipe like the image, name, summary, servings, calories, prep time, cook time, <laughs> and what type of course and cuisine it is. So the first thing we wanna add is an image. So go ahead and click on the add image button. And this is just like any other time you add an image, You'll do so through the media library. And then once you find your image, click the use image button. Perfect. Next, it's time to enter the recipe details. And this is pretty self-explanatory. You're just gonna fill out the fields. So name, I'm gonna name this the Skinny Burger in Paradise. You wanna give it a quick summary. Again, I'm just adding dummy text for sake of time. And then you can add things like, you know, who's the author of the recipe. You could change the servings and the calories, prep time and whatnot. So we're gonna say this is two servings for people, obviously. <laughs> I'm just making up the calories here, I'm guessing. Prep time, cook time, total time. And again, I'm just guessing with all this, I, I have no idea, but again, this is where you can really get specific with your recipe. And then you also can select the course and the cuisine. If you click on the field, you'll have a bunch of different options there. So this is gonna be the main course in American cuisine, perfect. Next, it's time to add ingredients and instructions. So click on the ingredients and instructions link at the top of the screen. And this allows you to add detailed ingredients and instructions one by one. So I'm gonna start by adding my ingredients one by one. So the first thing, it's gonna be one pound of ground turkey. And again, you can add the amount, unit, name, and there is also a section for notes if you had sp have some specific notes for each ingredient. And then to add another ingredient, go ahead and click the add ingredient button. And this gives you the ability to add different ingredients. And we're gonna add two wheat buns and let's add another ingredient. And then one head of lettuce. Perfect. Now let's add our instructions. And you'll notice that each instruction coincides with the above ingredient. So the first instruction will be for our first ingredient and so on. So let's add the text, instructions, and an image. So we add 
the dummy text there and then click the add image to add an image to that instruction and again this is just like before brings it to your media library and you'll select the image that you want to coincide with that instruction there we go got our ground meat perfect and let's add another instruction so click the add instruction button and it's just the same click the add image button There we go, and we're going to do this for each ingredient. Perfect. There we go. Now that we have all the ingredients and instructions, if you have any additional notes to add, you can do so through the recipe notes tab. And this gives you a text box where you can add some additional steps and whatnot. All right, so I think we're ready to go. So go ahead and click the insert and close button to add this to the blog post. There we go, and as you can see, the plugin automatically adds the recipe to the top of the post. Now I want the content to be above the recipe, so let's go ahead and move that. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this at the top. There we go. Looks good, so let's go ahead and preview this before we publish it, so click the Preview Changes button. And drum roll. Do, 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 Boom. We now have a professional looking recipe within our blog post that not only displays a great looking step by step tutorial, but it's shareable on Printest. Printest. Pinterest as well. Both the featured image and the recipe image are both linked to the pin it button so that people can easily share your recipe across a very powerful social network of food bloggers. Awesome. All right, so let's publish this. So click the update button. There we go. And let's visit the site just to check it out and make sure everything looks good. We go to my recipes. Let's click on the cheeseburger in paradise. And perfect. Our recipe blog looks amazing and delish. All right, I love it. All right, next thing we want to do, let's adjust the footer. All right, so now it's time to customize the footer. And this theme gives you a few options whenever it comes to how you want the content to be displayed along the footer. So if we fast forward real quick to the end of this video, we can take a look at the finished product. And as you can see, we're going to design the footer so that it displays four different sections. You have an about me blurb, you have the categories of the blog posts, then you have the pages of our blog, and then finally on the far right you have a recent post section. Now the footer is a great place to encourage engagement on your blog, and that's because once someone scrolls down to the bottom of your home page, if there isn't anything to attract a click, chances are they'll bounce. So by having a footer that has clickable links and whatnot, it will give you the opportunity to keep visitors on your blog and keep them interacting with the content. All right, so let's customize the footer. So to make changes, we'll go to the customization menu. So click on that customize link and then click on the widgets tab. And then you'll notice that the theme separates the footer into five columns. This gives you some flexibility on how it will look, but we're gonna add only four columns. So for the first column, we're gonna add a small about me blurb and it's gonna mimic the about me blurb that we created earlier in the video for the sidebar. So in order for that to happen, we'll need to grab that HTML code from the sidebar and add it to the footer. So go ahead and click on the sidebar default border tab. 
Then click on the custom HTML About Me tab, and that'll open it up, and then select all of the code within the content section and copy it. Then click the arrow to go back to the widgets, and click on the footer secondary column one tab. Then click on the add widget button. And since we're adding HTML, click the custom HTML tab. And just like before, we'll give this a title of about me. And then simply paste the code within the content box. There we go. And let's make this live. So click the save and publish button at the top of the screen. And then let's add another column. So click the arrow to go back to the widgets. And then click on the footer secondary column two tab. And click the add widget button. And this is gonna be the column that has our blog categories. So select the categories tab. And within the settings, we're gonna add a title. So I'm just gonna title this categories. And then you have the option to display the categories a few ways. I wanna list them out. So I'm just gonna select show hierarchy. There we go. And let's save and publish this one. So click the save and publish button. Next is column number three. So again, we'll go back and click the footer secondary column three tab and then add a widget button. And then select the pages tab. And I'm gonna title this pages. There we go and sort by page title. Perfect. You have the option to sort by other ways, but I'm gonna leave it as is. We'll save and publish this. And let's go back. And then finally, column number four. So select that footer, secondary column number four. And that's gonna be our recent posts. And click the add a widget button and then select the recent posts tab at the bottom of the screen. And I'm gonna just title this recent posts. And you can configure the number of posts that you wanna display and then click the save and publish button. There we go, let's scroll down and take a look at it and it looks great. Now the final thing that we want to adjust within the footer are the credits. And if you notice, the theme by default states that the copyright is 2017 Kale. Now we want to change that so that the copyright is legally protecting the content on your blog. So to do so, go ahead and click on the arrow within the widgets menu to go back and then click on the general settings tab. Then you'll have the ability to adjust the copyright HTML. Now, if you're new to HTML, please make sure that you're following these steps exactly. Any misstep in the code can cause it to look incorrect on your live blog. All right, so we're gonna change the text kale to something that is more in line with your brand. So to change the credits in the HTML, simply remove just the letters kale and replace it with something like your blog's title. Next, you'll want to update the link, and I would link it to an about page or a landing page, but this is where you'll change the URL to something that relates to your blog. And again, make sure that you're changing out the URL in between the quotation marks. Once you've updated the credits, click the Save and Publish button, and then let's exit this menu, so click the X, and we're good to go. All right, now that you've put together an amazing food blog, there are a few last house cleaning tips I wanna share with you. First is in the footer. So if you scroll down to the bottom of the page where the footer is, there we go, 
you'll notice that there's a blog page link within that pages column of the footer. And that's because we had to create a separate blog page in order to configure our primary nav, even though we aren't using the blog page for the blog feed. I know it sounds confusing, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you click on that blog link within the pages column, it's gonna take you to a blank page. And that's because we're not using this blog page for our blog feed. We're simply just using this blog page to configure our primary nav. So we wanna get rid of this page within uh, our footer. And the way to do that is we need to configure the widget. But before we do that, we need to know the page ID of this blog page. So to find the page ID, I recommend that you use the inspect element feature in your web browser. And this little trick lets you examine the source code of any web page and gives you some insight as to how the page is built. I'm using Chrome, so to inspect the element, just simply right click your mouse on the page and then click inspect. And then you'll see the source code as well as a lot of other aspects of the particular web page, but all we want is the page ID. So I'm gonna click Command F on my keyboard and that's gonna open up the find function or, or the search function. And then I'm just gonna type in page dash ID and that's gonna automatically highlight and find anything within the source code that says page dash ID and that lets us find the page ID which is 155. Now that we have the page ID, we can remove the blog from the pages column within the footer. Here's how it's done. So you'll want to access the footer widget. So hover your mouse over your blog's title and click on widgets from the drop down menu. Then to make changes to the pages column, click on the arrow within the footer secondary column three tab. and then click on the arrow on the Pages tab, and this will open the settings of that particular column. Then in the third field titled Exclude, enter the page ID. So we'll just type 155, there we go. Then click that blue Save button. That'll push the changes live. And then let's check this out. So go ahead and hover your mouse over the blog's title and click visit site. And if we scroll down to the bottom of the page, you should see that the blog page link has been removed from that column within the footer. Again, this helps create a good user experience and will allow your blog feed to live exclusively on your homepage. Now, if you're concerned about having a blank page that can be crawled by the search engines, I recommend setting up a 301 redirect for the blog page and have it point to your home page. I won't go into too much detail in this tutorial, but if you have any questions on how that's done, please reach out in the comments or get in contact with me at bpc at blogwithbin.com and I'd be more than happy to help you out and set up a 301 redirect. All right, the final housekeeping tip I wanna share with you deals with SEO. By default, WordPress hides your blog from the search engines, and that's because your blog isn't optimized for the search engines when you're just starting to build it. However, now that you have a search engine friendly blog that is structured correctly and has content, you're ready for the search engine bots to crawl your site. So one way to let the search engines know that your blog is ready can be configured in your WordPress dashboard. So to do that, simply go to your dashboard so on the left hand, upper left hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over your blog's name and click on dashboard. And then within the dashboard on the left hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over settings and click on reading. Then towards the very bottom of the reading settings, you'll see an option for search engine visibility. Like I said, by default, WordPress discourages search engines from indexing your blog. So to encourage them to crawl and index your site, simply uncheck that box. And then click the save changes button to push those changes live. 
All right, and one final thing I should mention is that this doesn't guarantee that your blog will be indexed by the search engines. You'll also need to submit a sitemap to all the major search engines in order for your blog to be properly indexed. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail on how to create and submit a sitemap in this tutorial, but if you need some extra help, leave me a comment or send me an email and I'd be more than happy to help you out. All right, congratulations. You now have a fully functional food blog that is ready for the world. The Kale theme, coupled with the power of WordPress and Bluehost, is a digital launch pad for multiple types of food industries and campaigns. It's a great way to start an online business, and building a blog is your first step towards becoming an online success. So that's going to do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. As always, your support means a great deal to me and my family, and for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.